Welcome to the No Practice Podcast, where we cover the only sport in the world where there is no practice. With your mini rod driving host, Adam Kester, Tyler Slaw, and Chase Richardson. Strap in for some debates on the world of pulling, exclusive special guests, and a whole lot of nonsense BS. The No Practice Podcast starts now. Now. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for episode 12 of the No Practice Podcast, where we like to sit, have a few drinks, pretend we are back behind the trailer after an event, and have a good time, talk some nonsense and BS. We've got Adam Kester, Mr. Chase Richardson. For those of you tuning in to the audio-only portion of this, we do do it live on Facebook and YouTube, but we've got a interruption board back here for every time Mr. Richardson interrupts, that way we can keep him in check. Uh is that a formal intro? Is that a formal intro? Can I just go ahead and get one on the board now? Dude, uh, get put one on the board. Yeah. Last show, I was a little sick and uh, under the weather. Um, badass intro, ba- badass show. Shout out to our yeah, last guest, yeah. Mark Inter- Connie, Tate Inter- Ray. Interrupting already, as usual, Chase. We've got a mark on the board. Uh, we had really high reviews for the last episode because you were sick, you weren't drinking, you knew how to keep your mouth shut. And we all enjoyed that, but uh, well, I don't know about the mouth shut. He he was eating popcorn on the last episode. Yeah, he so. was. I found that very interesting. You know, he was just snacking and smacking his lips during the whole show, but we allowed him to stay on nonetheless for the portion. I didn't, of uh, it. I didn't have the ability to throw a beer, so I had to throw popcorn. Uh, yes, yes. That show, and you know what? Shout out again to you pulling fans across the world. I think our reach was nearly almost thirty thousand on that last episode alone. We're only. We're on 12 episodes now, uh, but this is all about growing the, the the sport that we all love and know. And I think our mission is so far accomplished about getting the word out there is every show, it's kind of an exponential growth. So shout out to you fans, the best pulling podcast in the world and soon to be maybe one of the best motorsport podcasts in the world. Uh, more to come on that in future episodes. Yeah. And Chase is very humble about it too, isn't he, Adam? Absolutely, man. Yeah. He- he would like everybody to think we're listening to uh, Joe Rogan. So we've uh, we've got a fellow mini rod puller that also uh, reached out to me, and he plays a drinking game with this podcast. Uh, every time Chase says a certain phrase, he takes a drink, and I'm not going to tell Chase what that is until he says it because I haven't been paying close attention, but apparently there's a certain phrase that Chase says about a dozen times every episode. So, Chase, you better be on guard for that. Yeah, you know what? What's what's better about this sport? You know, it is the only sport in the world where there is no practice, but everyone loves everyone. And for those of you that don't know the sport of pulling, you know, the love and the family atmosphere. You know, what more place? What other place can you go to feel the love than the first four minutes of the No Practice podcast? So, yeah, shout out, absolutely. shout out to you guys for that love. Absolutely. Yeah, I know. So what, I think I think this uh, podcast is starting to get some traction. There have been some phone calls uh, with some people about certain subjects that. I guess when you speak vocally on here, um, I just hope everybody take it in the right context of what we're trying to do here. So, uh, like we said, we're all trying to grow the sport, and uh, maybe that can be misstrewed sometimes with with some people's ideas of what we're doing here. But we, we, we truly are trying to make this better in every way, shape, and form from our point of view. And yeah, all I, three of us have a different point of view about it. So uh, we appreciate the feedback. Um, it is getting traction, getting a lot of people that have kind of mentioned things about, had conversations about why I think this way. or And that's all we're trying to do is have a conversation. So I think it's gaining traction with some people here. Um, hope we're bringing the entertainment. We, um, Adam, the numbers our, don't lie. Adam, Adam the numbers, numbers don't, don't lie. Don't lie. Just like next our guests, Saturday. Our, our guests are great. You know, we're, we're getting really good feedback. And, uh, yeah, we got some big names coming here soon, I I do believe. So, yeah. Um, but, but, again, awesome. you know, n- numbers well, are well, numbers. I'm an analytical data guy uh, whenever I need to be. And, you know, just like next Saturday at the Mac Winter Nationals, more on that later. Um, out of us three competing, whoever does not 
have the biggest number in terms of distance is going to get their ass beat. Whoever has the biggest number is going to be the best. So, so I've got a, a I've got a proposal world. for that, Chase. Not to interrupt mm-hmm. you, but uh, so this is going to be the first time the three of us are going to be competing with one another at an event since we've started this little nonsense we call a podcast. I feel like we need to have some sort of wager on the line. Um, are you guys familiar with the Pocky One Chip Challenge? Yep. Uh, no, I don't watch TV. Oh. Fill me in. So, well, it's not really a television thing, Chase, so much as an internet thing. Um, there is a chip out there, and it is a single tortilla chip, basically, and it is loaded with some of the hottest spices known to man. And so just eating this one chip is unbelievably hot and basically tears apart your insides and makes <clears throat> your entire life. And shit I through screen like, door, shit through yeah. a screen door, not hit a wire. Yeah, pretty much. And Adam, you have a bidet. You've shared that with us in previous yep. podcasts. I still haven't so hooked that thing up I, yet. <laughs> my proposal was I own one of these Pocky One Chip Challenge things that's completely unopened. And so right. I say I bring that to the truck show, and whoever does worse out of the three of us has to eat that chip on the next podcast at the end of it. What do you gentlemen think? I'm calling you out. I'm down is that for like, it. Is that like, is that like uh, the only, natural, the only thing is natural Tyler... X-Lax? Yeah, pretty it much. Might, it could be an imposter chip, you know? Well, tell you what. It is sealed in the plastic. When the three of us get to the truck show, all three of us will sign it. <laughs> that way we know whatever unfortunate okay. fellow has to take this home, they can show our three signatures on it, knowing that it hasn't been tampered with, and they have right. to open it and consume it on the podcast for the other two's enjoyment. The uh, the The... March 27th, next episode, uh, to follow the truck show, uh, yeah. we will activate this challenge. You know, what's better than the sport of pulling with a, a wager here and there? Uh, no pun intended. Um, do you Adam, have a weak you, tummy? I, I, do you have a weak tummy, Chase? Adam, does hot I think stuff that, bother you? Adam, I think there's still time to, to cancel your invite, uh, to the truck show if you want in on this. Uh, so because right. we got to do it. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, we'll call it a gentleman cheers on the show here, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll we'll call it a deal. We'll, we'll be sure to have some fun and uh, tune in for Brandon episode Simon. thirteen. Brandon Simon says we need to throw some cash in on it instead of uh, the one chip no, challenge. We can, we can, no, we, that's we not fair because that. I'm 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 too poor compared to you guys. I just have tortilla chips, not money to throw around. Yeah. I think this is this is a good time to talk. How about, about this? Uh, How about this? Fathers. I'm, I'm, I'm going to run this by you. How about this? Whoever wins of the three picks the challenge. I mean, if, don't if get me wrong, have... that's a that's a good challenge. But Adam, it's says, 75 uh, degrees in Kentucky. It's 75 degrees in Kentucky, but I sent some cold feet in Indiana right now. For what? <laughs> yeah, I, for what? I threw it out there. I, I, I say First that. Off, I'll, I'll do the, yeah, I'll do yeah, the chip yeah. challenge. I'm good with that. I okay. like hot stuff. I'll probably, uh, you know, oh, yeah. have We've a understood. glass of understood. milk understood. ready. So, so, sounds like <laughs> if you guys want to throw some money in on it, much like Bruce financially backs my pulling tractor, he will back my broke ass from the bet standpoint as well. So uh, sure. with with his backing, I'll be arrogant and say. I was just going to say, I'll, off, if, off, if I get last, I'll eat the chip. I'm good with that. But if I win. Okay. Chase Richardson's going to run into that sled so hard in reverse, he's going to get that out of his <laughs> damn, out of his head. Oh, that's right. fair, Chase. If if Adam wins, not only is he going to, to Mike Connie's credit, take home ten thousand dollars for winning the that's event, right. but Chase has to back into the sled, and then he if can you, shut up with win. it because he has. I have so much more ammo on Chase than me backing into the sled is the only thing he keeps that and the Adam butt, which I don't know what that's all about, but. Yeah, that's a good. Yeah. I think that's a fair bet. <laughs> yeah. So you win the pool. I'll make sure I don't have forward, uh, forward, forward takeoff on my mini rod the next outing. Promise you. Now it may not be at a Grand National event, but just I'll do you it. You better put some different wheelie bars on there because I'm sure as, they're going to get bent up. As long as we get a video of it for the uh, show intro, isn't that that's right? It. Adam? Yeah, that's yeah, right. Sure. That's right. That's all. Uh, we well, do. It's a deal. All, all, so, so this is the beauty of this podcast. We got. Uh, an X Lax, natural X Lax, going to be taken if whichever the losers of us, I'm forgive me for not remembering the word. Word, and then if Adam wins the truck show, which if I don't win, I would just assume you two win. Um, I will 
take off in reverse, and we'll we will put add it to the intro that it. way you're not alone. Right. So um, okay. so so the truck show. Hang on a second, Tyler. I'm not even sure you're going to be able to run. Uh, but, but before we get to that, <laughs> yeah. we do have we do have we do have a big guest later this show, uh, Mr. Josh Blackburn, who will be joining us uh, as a star of the show here shortly. We'll get more to that later. But back to this truck show. So basically, you're making a bet on a non guarantee you're going to run. So last I saw your tractors, um, and last I saw some emails. Have you had any updates done to uh, to to make yourself compliant and, and kind of take the myself and the listeners of kind of how your pr- process is going to go to get approved uh, to pull next week? Um, so we haven't done a whole lot at this point. I will be com- completely <laughs> honest, but uh, you know, it's we're still over a week away from the event, you know. So I feel like we've got some time. We do have kind of a plan in place, and I feel like our plan is going to uh, make us compliant with those rules exactly as they read. Um, and once again, just thank you to all the powers that be for giving us thirty days to work on it to kind of uh, allow us <laughs> plenty of time to uh, get our ideas flowing, so we can implement sure. some sort of strategic change to meet those plans. And safety is important. And at the end of the day, that's what this is all about is safety. Right. Yeah. So are you uh, going to sit on top of the engine and with your feet <laughs> like, like like are you going to be like elevated like high with your feet down in the behind? He the said he has or? not cut anything off the tractor. So I don't think that's happening. That is true. That is true. Um, But it wouldn't take that much time to remove the roll cage and turn it around backwards and just sit with your feet by the rear end and your butt over top of the bell housing. That seems like it would be a pretty good time. I mean, would right. you would you just get a rear view mirror to Here's the question for you Tyler, would you would you drive it uh would you hook up the brake lines up opposite? I don't know. Would... And to be completely <laughs> honest, question. uh I guess I'll ruin this. That's not what I'm going to do or I want to have said. I know it, but that's <laughs> theoretical. <laughs> we did think about that though. Um but if we were going right. to do that, I would reach out to the powers that be of course and make sure that would be approved so there's been so somebody needless, needless to say if you want in person if, if, if you want to know the solution here the best option to to see if mr tyler gets to run is just to show up in person there right as i take Absolutely. a tally just i'm just i'm just i'm just trying to get the information to the fans out there so show up buy your tickets we'll talk about the tickets here shortly adam last show uh you had some technical difficulties which really saw our ratings rise rapidly when you went down. But in the meantime, we didn't get the the, the chance to for you to answer. I know you've been working on a new mini rod. Uh, it's probably there right behind you. What do you plan on running there next weekend at the truck show? I didn't get it. You didn't get a chance to answer. You know, I'm going to give you guys a, a break. I'm going to run this new one just so I can start to feel things out. You know, I'd hate to take one that actually knows what, know what it's going to do. Um, so, We'll take the new one. Just check it out. See what it's all I, about. I like that. It's it's looking pretty and it's looking a yeah. whole lot more prepared than what mine is. Is that what's is that's what right is that what is right behind you, Adam, over your shoulder? Right there. Yeah. Actually, the damn thing would probably be done if I'm not I'm so picky. I love my golf cart tires. As Chase knows, he thinks everybody needs to have them. But um Yeah, requirement. Uh, yeah. So uh, that took a little time to do that. I redid the steering on it, had to redo the seat. Redid the fenders and then going through all the new motor mounts and everything. It's been a task. Like uh, it's, it's really, it's really hard to get everything done that I need to get done when I, my wife is so nice and, and takes care of our, our kid. And I'd usually try to go home for a couple hours and spend some time with him. When he goes to sleep, I come back up here and I, I've been messing with it on and off, but you know, I had some help from, from some friends and whatnot, but I, I feel like, this is a, a, a another step for me as far as like starting, you know, with a fresh slate when it comes to a tractor. And you know, yeah, it's kind of it, we've never owned a modern chassis or anything like that. But I think this is our um, this is our best shot to take there and try to go for ten grand. Now it is brand new and it will, has zero passes on it, but I have confidence in in it. So. 10 grand in the shot for me to take off in reverse, which I know is more important. Absolutely. I'd put it in the sand pile um, to the wheelie bars 
if if I knew you were going to back into the sled and shut the hell up about it. So it's, I'd be cheering uh, hard as hell for it too. If, if you this, guys want is, to, uh, Bruce says he'll put up a thousand dollars. So that's up to you guys. Thousand dollars. I don't know uh, what that thing costs. I haven't put all the uh, the numbers together, but uh, it'd just be another thousand dollars on top of that. Well, it's up gotcha. to you guys. Bruce Bruce isn't going to let you guys bully me like that. So. Hey, I we'll see do, here we got it. a CJ Grozik's checking in from Farley, uh, Iowa. I guess he took that job up there with Simons. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I believe he did. Let's, uh, let's talk about that. I don't know if they ever got anybody hired, but our I think it was episode six or seven, one of our biggest shows ever, Brandon and RJ Simon, uh, the Simon family, a household name at polling, put an open, uh, I guess, job ad on Facebook for anyone interested in wanting to get involved in pulling work for the Simon team. So uh, there my is cousin, one major, one major key in part of that. They must have a CDL. So oh. there's a lot of farm trucking operation there that you need to be going, but he, I've talked to him. He's had some good, um, good info from people. They're still searching. I do believe, but great family. I mean, their outreach is a lot. I mean, there's an opportunity there. If somebody's got a CDL, can run some some semis and can run some farm equipment and knows how to wrench on on a few things, there's an opportunity there uh, for a really you good family. You have a CDL to drive a semi? Yeah, I'm pretty sure, unless it's a oh, registered yeah. RV, you know. I didn't know that. See, I don't have a CDL, but I only drive RVs around. So Yeah, same yeah, here. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. So uh, speaking of the truck show, even though Adam has a brand new tractor, we still get to see what sort of odds he has, according to the people, to win this event. Correct, Chase? Yep. Yeah, there's a, there's an active contest, just like the Farm Machinery Show, uh, via the Full Pull app and uh, website. You can pick your winners in all four classes uh, using real odds. Uh, did it the Farm Show. Had uh, close to a couple thousand people engaged and playing at the same time, which was pretty awesome. Um, same thing for this truck show event. So I guess it's the first time in the world that first time in our lifetime we're pulling against each other with real odds. So I'd be curious to look at them. I saw them uh, when they first came out, but they, they're kind of moving regularly. So Chase, I'm pretty sure none of us are the favorite. Okay, here we go. We're starting out with uh, Jeff Hurt with B-Bear. He's got a 9.4 to 1, we'll call it. Abby Leishner, not Bill, in the Bobcat Jr. with 9 to 1. Ken Venny to me, it looks to be a favorite, which is no surprise for anyone. Looks like he's holding down a 6.8 to 1 yeah. odds. Brian Guza, which I believe is a first-time competitor at the truck show with a 16.2 to 1. We've got myself with a 13.7 to 1. Jeff Hurt with Little Bear with a... Bear with me here. Everything just changed on the screen. Jeff Hurt with Little Bear with an 8.6 to 1. We've got Grant Theobald with a 7.7 7 to 1. Dylan Bonnage with a 15.3 to 1, which let's pause right there. Dylan Bonnage, I believe, two years ago was the only other person in the pull-off with my dad when he won it, and I believe they did extremely well last year as too. Um, he's, got another, second, another, he's gotten second both times, both years no, there, and he's, he's Another a thing shot. to be said, that year that Dylan and Tyler, or Bruce, were in the pull-off, I had both tractors, two of them, within a foot of that pull-off. Couldn't get in it. I was one foot yeah. short with both well, of them. I, I, think I, I feel like Dylan Bunnage there, to me, is kind of a value pick, really. Um, Renee yeah, Theobald with a 12.9 to 1. Bruce, who won two years ago, with a 16.4 to 1. So people <laughs> that's, just, another big, that's another big number. Yeah, honestly, I feel like that's not bad. Chase yourself with a 14.7 to 1. And Adam with the brand new tractor with seventeen point three to one odds. So what this tells me is that if the the fans think Adam's going to be eating the the hot shit with the Xlax, uh, if the fans have any indication. But what it also tells me is this stuff <laughs> is so wide open and unpredictable, uh, as we all know as competitors. But when you put odds beside it, it gets very very interesting. You, Every like, single point, vehicle on that list has won a pull. Like, I've been very in close to winning memory. a pool in the last three years. Like, I would say less, less than probably the last two years, to be honest with you. Like, every them. tractor that's as stacked as list as you get, really. Yeah. If you, th yeah. if you think about it. Yeah. So, 
Cool. I guess we're all long shots. We're all we're all chasing. That's uh, fine. I got I got Vinny. invited after the fact, so it'll 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 be so much better when so, I get to see I, Jace ran run into that sled in reverse. I can't wait. Just just looking at the values on the left, as far as how much money is placed on them, from my meager understanding, I believe these odds are based on how much is wagered on each individual person. Can Correct. anybody? elaborate on that yeah. or just yeah. like uh th th just like horse racing it's not a ai technology or someone behind a computer it's all based on uh where, where money is wagered in a peer-to-peer -peer, uh type platform so they can will continue to move up until the start of the class uh and then obviously when it's pull bet pull picking and pull wagering like this uh you know it doesn't take much to hit it big you know for instance with your thousand dollars play money if you uh if you pick a, a deal in Bunnage for three or four hundred dollars, you're going to be extremely amplified. Uh, your amount to to almost what was it seventeen times the amount. So a lot of fun, a lot of excitement. Uh, and again, the Mac Winter Nationals, all proceeds go to charity. Um, you can sign up on this game on the full pull app and full pull platforms. Free to play. Sign up, download the app. A new reskinned app. Uh, excited about what's in store with it this summer. Uh, you can also, uh, we want to shift gears to purchasing tickets. Tickets for the Mac Winter Nationals are available on Ticketmaster. Uh, all proceeds from this event, as mentioned last week by Mr. Mike Connie himself, goes to charity. Um, this is a big new upstart event. And then also a really even cooler thing, Mr. Craig Morgan has announced publicly on this podcast two weeks ago, uh, Craig Morgan will not only be doing the national anthem, uh, country music star Craig Morgan, but he will also be performing a couple of acts or two. So um, can't miss event. You heard the passion. Go back and listen to episode 11 behind this event. Highly recommend you to get your tickets, bring your friends, show up. If you're there, please stop and say hello to me, Tyler, and Adam. We will have no practice podcast decals on our tractors uh, to represent the brand and obviously – Compete, compete our ass off a of track, kick, 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 kick each other's ass, but also have a you know good time raising money for charity. T so t t today, Junior. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm still under the weather. But anyway, okay. next next week, uh, March 23rd. So thought your teleprompter quit working. I think it's time to go to the the highly anticipated uh, segment we always have ahead of us. The man, I wish there was practice. Oh yes, I believe we do have that. The good the segment, a, the 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 one we never have a drum roll correctly ready for. But uh, go ahead, backstage operator. I think Give we're making them work. I think we're making making them do too much. The no practice podcast. Man, I wish there was a practice segment. Oh my god! Tyler, the floor is yours. Yes. Right. Well, um, do we have a video? I believe. Mr. Backstage, we have, we have a video. Uh, yeah, we've we've, snap, we've got snap. a video. I believe. Yep. I mean, there we, we don't go. want there dead air go. here, so here we go. <laughs> this is good. Yes. All right. So our, this is we. Okay. Here we go. All right. So we've got uh, Mr. Kevin Dick here with a beautiful brand new tractor called the Cat Sass. And he takes off. He gives up the throttle. He's driving off the line. The front end picks up. The front end slams down. Front tire brakes. He kicks sideways. And his brand new mini rod rolls over. Uh, Kevin, are you on the line here with us? Can you hear us right now, sir? Yes, sir. So walk us walk us through what happened in that video. That was a brand new tractor, correct? Brand new tractor, very first run. Very first run, and um, not not only a very first run for that specific mini rod, but that was your first pass in a mini rod of that caliber, correct? Yes, I uh, driven uh, started guard tractors in 1975, age 12, and uh, aspirated minis in 81, and. Uh, Drove some blown small blocks and big block injected, but that was the first time in a blown big block, I guess, Grand National style mini. 
So did the craziness of the mini ride class really live up to its name when you put it on its side on your very first pass? Well, you asked me to walk you through the run. So uh, I backed to the sled. I could not get in gear. I remember Keith Horse coming up to the tractor to rock the tires back and forth for me to get, get it in gear. And then it fell into gear right as Keith was standing in there. And after that, I don't remember anything, thankfully. <laughs> oh, a little blackout <laughs> procedure. Is that correct? I don't remember a thing, thankfully. Now, was there some fellow friends and family members that told you, I don't know if you should be getting into one of these things, they get a little crazy, and you reassured them everything would be okay? <laughs> no, I, I, uh, I didn't. Uh, everybody knows that. Uh, my wife couldn't be any more supportive. Uh, after the crash, I never thought of uh, retiring. Uh, I built this tractor as my last tractor, my last hurrah at this point in life. And um, uh, she asked me what I wanted to do, and I said, that's not how it's going to end. Um, so uh, I'm fortunate and blessed to have her and, uh, and a lot of good help from good friends, and, uh, and we came back. Well, what a good woman. Talk us through the naming process. You know, <laughs> we, we get to watch you ride around in the cat's sass and for those of you again that's the cat's sass uh yes. how did that come about there's got to be a backstory there well, like you Mike and kevin we are all animal lovers here yeah i, I mean i don't take any offense to you explain this uh so, so don't feel like we're animals haters well um uh, <laughs> i uh i sold my aspirated mini in uh 2014 um and uh i said that was it i was done with minis i uh, put together a tractor that my dad had helped build in uh 70 uh 374 uh, spirit of 76 uh tractor which actually won louisville in 77 the modified class and uh just did the legends things for a while and uh my wife didn't believe me and she says well what are you going to call it when you build another one and and i you know, I just kind of spout off. And... Oh, I, I hear her correcting you in the background there, Kevin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I, yeah, no, I said, if you get another mini, I get to name it. Oh, you so this is your fault. Yes, it's mine. So he said, well, what would you name it? And I'm not, I said, I'm not quite sure. And then Kevin said, well, what about the cat's ass? And I was like, yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> Look, a little Tiger King influence there with the uh, uh, picture on the fenders. Looks nice. Yeah, yeah. It's very nice. You know, it yeah. it wouldn't be so ironic if your last name wasn't Dick either. So, you know, so <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Dick's in the cat's ass just has a ring to it, you know. Well, we do have Chase Richardson with the vibrator in the hole. Um, yeah. That is announced at a couple pulls. <laughs> Yeah, no, and for those that have never been to an event, the announcers like to say uh, the driver in the vehicle. So sometimes it can be a little fumbling when it said Kevin sticks in the act in the cat's ass. <laughs> <laughs> no very very yeah, popular you know, with the kids, I, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I think they good fellas. I grew up in the '70s, so uh, I've heard them all except for that one. So I can take <laughs> it. I've got a lot of experience. <laughs> We love it. Well, we're glad to hear that you didn't uh, sustain any serious injuries from that wreck. Um, I believe you had to go to the hospital, but I believe you were cleared and okayed, and they just said, take it easy, correct? Yeah, the worst part was I had three broken ribs, so I didn't sleep for about six weeks because it was uh, very challenging. I don't know if anybody's ever broken any ribs, but that's oh, the yeah. first time I did. So that was the, that was the worst part of it. Um, but uh, like I said, uh, once I got healed up, uh, we started making plans to come back. And uh, I appreciate everybody and whatever I can do to help. You made some really good passes back. there at the end of the year. Yeah, I was going to say, talk about the beauty of this story. You know, everyone talks about the wreck your first run, but you, you came back out last season, had, had a ton of success towards the end. You know, I let's did. not talk about the bad, talk about what went good, too. Yeah, so um, obviously, uh, and there's two people. Um, that, that said something to me uh, when I'm sitting in the driver's seat. One was Bruce, uh, Tyler's dad, basically patted you on the shoulder and said, uh, you can do this. You've done it before. And, and I appreciate that. And Vic Storeholder said the same thing. But, um, yeah, Lee Swift has been uh, very encouraging and very coaching for me. Uh, that's been huge. Um, 
So we we just the first five runs, like the first one was at Wapakoneta, and, and I called Tyler, and I didn't even have the thing wired up Saturday morning, but I was only an hour and a half from there, and he said, "Come on down, we'll help help you." So I went down, um, and uh, we got it on the track that night. Of course, the hitch was real low, and it was real flat, and the timing was slow. Everything you do, I just want to get it down the track in one piece, and so the first four, five, six runs, we were fat, and 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 just I just it was more about my. Uh, getting down the track in one piece than anything. And then we started sneaking up on it and learning. And at Wauseon, uh, at the Grand National at Wauseon, we ended up fifth. And uh, if I had gone another foot and a half, I'd have beaten Tyler. And that would have been that would have been the cat's ass itself right there. <laughs> oh, come on. That's not hard to do. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the year, Wauseon, it was a good track. <laughs> whatever you guys are up for i'll see you at the truck show or wherever we're meeting friday night we'll see you there and we'll take it on all right man we'll be there hey thanks for coming on kevin thank you yep and then we did get a win at roanoke so it, it was a good season and we'll see you at the truck show next week so. absolutely brother thank you see you buddy thank you yep anytime thanks guys bye and how about that for Kevin to uh, start out his mini rod pulling gonna, career with a wreck and then come back with a win? At the I was going to ask him, but apparently he don't remember because I think right before this he had like a um, two engine mod that he the was thumper. running, the Thumper. Correct. And you know Chase has driven an, a, a big tractor, so has Tyler. Uh, what? How many? How many runs do you make on big tractor, Tyler? Couple. Two. Two. Okay. Two. Chase, what? Couple. Mm, two and a half. Two and a half. Okay. Yeah. I was gonna ask him because it looked like he was on a pretty good run, like taking off, like had really good speed and everything. I wonder if the mentality of being on a big tractor that's hard to turn and he stabbed the brake way too hard because it kind of looked like it overcorrected <laughs> and then it, you know it kind of shot off over to the side or anything. I was gonna, but apparently the guy doesn't remember. I think the last yeah. thing he remembers back up the sled. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So, but even man, him, in a dazed state of mind, he did get his tractor in forward with the help of Mister Horse. It's good. Yeah. Even even he got it in forward gear. <laughs> Thanks for that point out, Tyler. Uh, good yeah, one. shout out. To Kevin. That's a funny one. Tyler. Kevin, that was a, that was a fun statement, hey, Adam. Um, I think that's my first time I piled on on that one. So yeah. Well, at least it wasn't Billy Beer saying he wanted to punch Keith's dad in the face. Uh, you know yeah. that's a new shifter on that new tractor you're not going to be used to. Make sure – Dude, I don't – you know, nobody it's really funny. Why you're not looking. <laughs> it's really funny. I, I That's one of the last things I need to do. I need to fix the shifter, and I really don't like it. Like, I'm a very particular person, um, so I like the stuff to really be in order. And everything on this thing is totally different. So I, I'm so, going there with the intentions of winning. Me getting down the track, making a full pass is the, the, the plan. Um, but – I mean, this is a totally new and different thing for me. Um, you get in your comfort zone, you get out of it a little bit. It's totally different. So I'm I'm excited to see what happens, really. I promise we won't go in the pits and turn your shifter around. Uh, and by the way, <laughs> fans, when you're at uh, the truck show next week, we our vehicles, all pulling vehicles, will be straight staged in Broadbent. Stop by, say hello. Again, we're here to grow the greatest motorsport in the world and have fun doing it. So well, I think – the the next segment we got here is the highlight of the show. Yeah, uh, we're, poor, poor Josh. We are over a half hour in, and we haven't even gotten to the star of our show. Yeah, and, and you know what's funny? We we do do minimal prep sometimes. This is a no practice podcast, but like, I don't know if I prepped this one at all because I've known this guy my whole life, and he's a character. And I think these uh, questions are going to be pretty natural coming through. So, without further ado, um, from Blackburn pulling performance. Uh, I think I said that correctly. Black Blackburn racing components. Uh, well recognized, recent light super stock farm machinery show champion, multiple champions, and everything he's touched. Multiple champions. Uh, good friend of ours, badass uh, mechanic, engine builder, uh, CNC machinist, late, late night late night bar closer, uh, Mister Josh Blackburn himself, <laughs> Josh. There he is at the bar. Please look look at Josh, this. Please yeah, keep please. this keep this clean for all the pulling fans out there. Uh, because I know your stories are are probably a match, but thanks for joining the No Practice Podcast. Tell all the pulling fans, are you in your shop currently? I am. I'm uh I'm up in our bar and thanks for butchering our uh our, the name of our shop. Company, company names, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm cool. I'm not, I was thinking about getting a super stock, but I uh I changed my mind so 
Uh, forgive me for not knowing the proper lingo. All you guys say is Blackburns. Ain't, ain't no, your customers don't even know what it's called. It's just called Blackburns. So uh, <laughs> when you got a name recognition like that, that's all you need. But yeah. thanks for coming on uh, the No Practice Podcast. I know this is something you've uh, had circled on your calendar probably since our debut. So we're glad to save you for our latest and greatest episode. What's been new? What, looks like you still got your work attire on currently. Yeah, I, uh, I was working all day on Simon's Pro Stock. And towards the end of the day, I shifted gears and I was working on a set of pro mod heads. We're uh, doing something kind of neat with it. Uh, we're we're tapping these holes at compound angles so these guys can put a real small sensor in to uh, measure cylinder pressure. So some of these guys out there are data logging their cylinder pressure and they're using it sure. as a tuning tool. Um, we're not using any of our tractor stuff, but it's, it's really interesting. Um, it's actually a guy out of Dubuque, Iowa. Um, Rod Chick Fry has a sorceress. Uh, it's a pro mod car. Um, he was running uh, a couple precision turbos on it, and I, I talked him into putting some Hearts turbos on. And I know uh, those guys down in Missouri helped him out quite a bit with that. He's seen a lot of, a lot of gains, uh, but uh, it's been a long road for me. Love working for him. Uh, he's a great customer. So I try to do, you know, drop what I'm doing or work late at nights, weekends, or whatever. If you ask me to do something on it, something different. Very good. And uh, for those of you uh, new to the show and Josh, I don't know how much you've watched. Uh, we do have a few rules. You, rule number one, you had to have a Easy. six drink minimal uh, limit before coming on. Hopefully you're on your way there. And second, any question that gets asked uh, by any of us, feel free to hit the button. Uh, we won't, we have a name for it. We won't name reference it this time because it's pretty sensitive to some of our it's outdated uh, to some of my co-hosts here, but uh anything goes and looking forward to, to chopping it up with you uh and, and learning more about you as a competitor but also what you guys do uh behind the scenes so sure yeah so give us an overview you know we know your shop i've been to your shop i don't know how many beers i punished on a couple new years ago in the very bar that you're sitting in right there until <laughs> almost sunrise but like for those of you who or for people out there that have never met Josh Blackburn and don't know what they do, even though Chase butchered your business name, give us top to bottom brief rundown about what you guys all do there. Cause it's very vast as we know. Um, I just like to call it a performance shop to keep it short. And uh, you know, we do dyno service um, and it's, it's all about tractor pulling. We don't do a lot of race car stuff. I know I told you I was working on some pro mod heads, but uh, primarily just tractor pulling, but we do a dyno service we build chassis, so we have a fab shop. Um, all the guys here know how to TIG weld uh, fab parts. They, they're they um, they're really great. Um, I got uh, four guys working here, uh, Glenn, Brandon, Lance, um, and myself, I guess. Um, they're all good help, and, uh, you know, we got a great team. But uh, we also get into the machining side of things. We manufacture all of our components. Um, I'd say like 90% of our components we make in-house. And uh, that's something that we started, um, geez, back in like 2006, uh, we got our first Haas milling machine. We started making some simple parts here and there. And, uh, you know, it kind of rolled into a, some five axis, some more complicated stuff. We're making cylinder heads. Uh, we're starting on billet blocks. We're getting tooled up to do that now that we can run them in NTPA and PPL. Um, which is really nice. Um, most of these blocks that we're running in these tractors, are pulled out of a junkyard and um you don't know what they've went through um where they've been make, you know, make more horsepower than anything on that's available <laughs> it, it's nuts i mean our light supers we're making a ton of power with them and it's crazy to think that it's just a, a you know it's an old egg block that was pulled out of a combine somewhere and like i said god knows what what went on with it you know and we're, we're doing things to you know sandwich them together and and make them last but uh it's kind of scary. So I'm, I'm glad as a safety standpoint and somebody that sits on the seat of one of these things that uh, they're allowing us to do some billet blocks uh, with these tractors. And, you know, we're, we're staying with all the OEM specs and um, it's neat. But, yeah, we're, we're getting tooled up to do that currently. And, uh, you know, it's, I think that's going to be really cool. I'm excited to start doing that. So hang on a second. I don't know any different. You explain you don't you don't what do you get out of a junkyard again? I, I don't know because I don't the know any block. Of that. Just like Adam's saying, it's a 
the engine block, the foundational piece of our motor. Uh, we're getting it out of a junkyard. We're a line boring it. You know, we're making some modifications to it to slip in a dry sleeve, but uh, we are using an agricultural block in these motors. Now in our heavies, um, like in HD, we have a uh, Schnicker block in that, which is a recast. And, um, and that's been working really well. Um, we really, really like his blocks. Interesting. That's uh, behind the scenes info. I didn't know uh, junkyard. That junkyard shit run pretty good for you at the at the farm show, though, uh, to say the <laughs> least. Was that your yeah. first light superstock championship and then the uh, light superstock farmer show, farm machinery show championship? Uh, it was actually my second. I couldn't tell you it's the second second one I've gotten down there. Gotcha. Gotcha. And I guess is that a bunch of trophies I see behind you there or no? Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's a few up there. Uh, so how many of you and your dad won total? Do you have any idea? Down at the farm show? <laughs> no, just trophies. Oh, trophies? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so that's when you know you're a badass. When someone said how many trophies she got, and he says, I have no idea. Um, Blackburn is a household name. So, Josh, how did you – obviously, your dad got going in this sport well long ago. Um, <clears throat> uh, take, take, take us through the chronological timeline of – uh, Terry Black, we're getting into it to having this kid named Josh, uh, who as teenagers was a hellion running around the pits. And I didn't ever know that would be doing what he's doing now, but kind of take us through your dad's lineage and kind of how you got brought into all this and how Blackburn is an empire at this point, uh, in, in your career. Uh, yeah, it started at Fred Blackburn's and Sons Case IH dealership. Uh, my grandfather and his brother owned, and um, <clears throat> they got into some drag racing. Uh, they got cheated a few times at the lights at some, I, I can't remember what track it was. They, I don't know, they were, they were just trying to soup up stuff. They were putting turbos on like, a, we were just talking about it today. Uh, my dad had an international scout and he was trying to put different turbos or something on it, you know, just souping up, blowing up crap, you know, ripping engines apart, putting them together. I know they made a lot of mistakes. Um, they, they decided to, you know, take a pulling tractor that was in a fire or taking a, tra a stock tractor that was in a in a fire, and they um, they souped it up and took it to a, a local county fair. I think it was in Warren or maybe Darlington, something like that. And that's how it really got started. They were just it, would, it was my uncle and uh, my dad, a couple of diesel mechanics uh, out screwing around. Really cool. Yeah, that's really how it actually started. Putting a turbo an international scout, if you know what that is. Got it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So then obviously he made the accident of giving birth to you. How did you get into all this? I just, I was always, uh, so they, they worked out in our two car garage. We had like a ranch style house, three bedroom. We had a two car garage. I know my mom had to park her car out in the driveway and my dad and my uncle would be in there until they would, they would work their shift at the, at the case IH dealership. They would come home. They would start tinkering in the garage, and they would get done about midnight. My dad has a good friend, uh, Tom Riley. He owns a commercial plumbing and heating company, and he'd be out there too. And I know my mom would come out because they've told me this, you know, that, hey, it's bedtime. You know, he'd, I was probably like five, six years old, and they'd have to tear me out of there. I'd want to stay until, until those guys were done, you know. I was really kind of interested in all that stuff. Now, when it comes to that, with your dad and friend working out in the shop, because I do the same thing here a lot. Like people may may not believe me or not, but we're talking Wisconsin. Like you guys can drink a lot of people under uh, pretty easily. I mean, were they boozing big time out there when we work on the stuff, or not so much? Just more into the work. I don't really remember if there was like alcohol involved on the toolbox or the workbench while those guys were going at it, but right. I'm sure there. You know, I just I mean, it's Wisconsin so much going out there, kid. You know, it was like, I don't know, 10 uh, the out of the 12 uh, cities in the world that have the highest drinking per capita. I think 10 of them are in Wisconsin, so you guys can put some booze down. But I was just really interested to see, you know, if they were focused on the work or is it started <laughs> out as a we're hobby and drinking and stuff like that because your dad's kind of like turbo innovator in the pulling world like really from yeah. the beginning his stuff always ran good you know i really i think the the drinking or the partying aspect came along when 
you know, I got started really. I don't think those guys really got into the booze. You're you're taking you all ever, the credit. You ever drink a party with your clients? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not you know. <laughs> is it part is it, is it part of he's the not he's not a booze bag, but you know, <laughs> yeah, for takes a little bit yeah. more than dad, maybe. Yeah. Is there an onboarding sense. process of working with you guys of, of them having to go hang out with you and try to drink with you for a night? Is that how you get a <laughs> acquire new clients uh you know i like to uh i like to drink and have a good time and i like to take my clients out if they if they want to go out you know um i got no problem with that it's always a fun time when you get somebody a customer whatever that wants to go out and mingle and see the sites and stuff for sure sure Sure. so yeah we we know there's more to tractor pulling than drinking beer for sure um the the technical question i had that a lot of people don't quite understand that always blows my mind when you say sandwich these blocks together so we're going to pull an old cast iron block out of a junkyard talk about the process of what's underneath that block what's above it and when you say sandwich what's actually trying to keep that engine block from becoming a viral video where the crank and the pistons and the rods are hanging in the bottom and the whole block and head flies off what does that process look like to keep that clamp together so we're not at the point like where the diesel supers and the pro stocks and things like that are at where they're taking a girdle and when they, when they manufacture this girdle, they're making it a little wider than the block itself. And they're coming up with tie rods up to the cylinder head, bolting it that way. So you say a girdle, but people out there don't even know what a girdle is. So, I mean, you're talking what, just a plate of steel on the top end and the bottom end, right? Aluminum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It could be 70, 75 uh, steel. It depends what class you're in. Really, I mean the pro stocks. I mean they're in ten too. They really don't have a problem with weight. Um, Lighter use stuff, you. Yeah. yeah, aluminum. Um, I wish I had a picture I could show you, but I mean some of the, the diesel classes they're taking, you know, well, three quarter ten tie rod, and they're they have four four of these tie rods on each side, so that's a total of eight tie rods, three quarter ten, so three quarter inch in diameter. And they're coming up with a five eighths hind joint, and they're bolting right into the top of the head and they're coming down to that girdle and they're essentially just snap blocked together. Three quarter, three quarter. I mean, that shit probably torques at what, if you torque, do they torque those <laughs> on the outside? I, I don't think so. They just give her no, just more, just, just get them tight. You just preload yeah. them with pressure on the heim joints, trying to draw <laughs> the cylinder head down onto the block with right. every force imaginable. Well, so that you know, that you look at a diesel super stock, doesn't blow it up. 400 pounds of boost, let's say. Now, in the alcohol engines, that number's drastically down, but you also have a spark plug light in it. So still the same bomb, basically, at a lesser of a yeah. boost, if you want to say. But uh, hey, yeah, backstage, backstage guy, I got to give me a tally. Uh, can we please get this last comment uh, up on, on our feed here uh, to carry on? Because I would love to get the feedback from everyone on this. Carry on. <laughs> What what is our feed? What is uh? You know, there's you actually know more tractor pulling than drinking beer. Yeah, we've we've seen that comment. We we clarified on that. We know that, don't we, Josh? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I love being social at the pull. That's a huge aspect of, for me. Um, growing up with dad, when I didn't have a lot of responsibilities, uh, we, we'd go to these pulls, and I mean, I just live for that. Uh, single, chase around some girls, uh, seeing seeing friends, seeing cool tractors hearing the motors run, watching it, um, you know, a lot of it was drinking beer, but I mean, it, how many more. years has your dad been pulling? Oh gosh. Ugh. Let's see. He started out. I think he started out in 78. It oh. might be. Yeah. It, it could, maybe it was So from, from your fondest memories, like you've been around it. Like I have like ever since you were a little kid. Well, we're all second generation pullers, right? right. That's um, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I've, I mean, from the moment I was born, I'm sure we were in our old school bus that we used to have pulling some shitty trailer down the road, going <laughs> to some pole. I mean, that was, yeah, so, that was basically our life. Right. So. so that always leads me into my questions. Like if you have one memorable story from up and down the road, you know, it could be recent, could be old, like, we have, we've had some pretty crazy stuff. Chase was driving a semi, blew out a steer tire, you know, yeah. takes it across the road. You know, Tyler, they had a they had a truck that was uh interesting at time, but what a 
kind of ran away from you a little bit or ran away from Bruce once. I know Simon's yeah. got it kind yeah, of the, ran away from him. The the throttle <laughs> hung wide open on me heading downhill yeah. towards right. the bridge over the Ohio so, River. Like oh, I've I, I climb in the seat of the motorhome, blow out a turbo, you know, just everybody's had issues and stuff. Is yeah. there a story from the road that you have that kind of, you know, sticks out as you can't believe this shit? I had a pretty good one. Um, so my uncle, Glenn Blackburn, he's probably, I don't know if he's listening or not, but. Um, What's up, so Glenn? I mentioned, I, me, I mentioned we had this this shitty bus that we kind of bought. It had a 466 in line six, you know, um, really slow. And my uncle is a, he's a speed maniac. Like it, guy loves the speed. He's always, I mean, he's always revving shit up and he, he just, <laughs> he likes to drive aggressively. Right. I like right. it. So, you know, I'm, I don't know how old I was. I was pretty young. Uh, so we got this bus, we got a, you know, like a generator, we got a fridge in there. We got some bad, we got lazy boy recliners and stuff that aren't oh. bolted into the ground, which that'll come later. Um, <laughs> Living large. You know, we got, we got it, it's, you know, it's all set up. It's like a double wide trailer, right? It's, it's a nice mm. little. Mm -mm -mm. But, uh, so my uncle. I like, goes how out, I like how this story started already. He, yeah. he goes out into the passing lane. I don't know where we were going, but so he's in the passing lane. And there's this Peterbilt that he's trying to pass, right? And the Peterbilt just starts creeping on the, on the throttle as soon as he's getting nose nosed up with it. They're they're side by side, parallel. <laughs> he's trying to pass them. So the faster he goes, the faster this Peterbilt goes, and he is like just getting fucking pissed, right? So <laughs> they're side by side. I would say for twenty to thirty minutes, and cars. Oh. We're getting so pissed off. They were going into the gravel on the side of the road on the shoulder and they're passing us. Right. <laughs> right. And this Peterbilt's probably got, you know, it's got more, more left, you know, because there's people passing us. You know, I don't, I think that thing topped out at maybe like well, the fuck? school bus. What would a school bus go like 68 <laughs> mile an hour at max? Yeah. Fucking screaming? I, I think they all go 69 mile an hour. In, in, so unless you good, unless you right. unless you take it out take take it the computer and get it adjusted. Well, I mean this this is like we're talking like seventy eight chase. They didn't they couldn't spell computer. Yeah, this yeah. thing got a four, it had a four fifty four. <laughs> this is all mechanical, everything on it. But yeah, yeah it, I mean, who knows what the ring and pinion? Was. I mean, I'm sure it was just geared low, but so all of a sudden the the people start passing us, and I hear my old man start yelling at my uncle. My mom's freaking out like everybody's yelling at each other and i'm here i'm just sitting i like to lay i'm like i'd get a blanket laid on the floor you know i know my dad was sitting on this lazy boy well anyway like glenn starts like he turns around and they're having an argument while he's trying to drive and he's not watching the road next <laughs> thing you know like there's stop traffic up in front of us and he has to lock the brakes on i just remember my dad <laughs> in the lazy boy just just smoked the shit out of me and we all were ended up in the front near the driver's seat of that thing and that was it i mean we got rid of the bus and uh we ended up getting a <laughs> semi and they souped it up so yeah <clears throat> that's one story if remember, any if funny. any viewers uh remember this scene a school bus racing a peterbilt on what what interstate was that Oh shit! I have no idea. I was really young. So, if you ever seen, so this you guys like have the back, the road. you have the like the back cut out of it, the roll cage sticking <laughs> through the top of the roof and shit. Like, no, all no. Of... we had a, we had a trailer behind it. We were pulling. Oh, we had a trailer behind oh, the school bus. We have John Dean, you know, John Dean had, would be disappointed. You had a single wide <laughs> rolling down the road, man. That yeah. was yeah. high class. It high was class. Um, blue with white <laughs> pinstripes. That's awesome. I mean, she was she was lovely duckling. Love it. Love it. That'd be a All right, Josh. Uh, I don't know if you've ever listened to this show before, but I mean, when our guests are being a little stiff like you are tonight, we try to loosen <laughs> them up with uh, okay. some rapid fire questions. So these are rapid fire. We just need a quick answer. You don't need to elaborate. It doesn't even need to be the right answer. It just needs to be a quick answer. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Would you spend a year in prison for $10 million? Absolutely. Do you think you could eat a five-gallon bucket of mac and cheese in a week's time? Yeah. 
You guys have several tractors on your tractor pulling team. If one of those was guaranteed to win at every event, but you had to completely give up driving a tractor for a year, would you take that opportunity? Yeah. Who would last longer on the TV show Naked and Afraid, Colin Ross or Cody Cheesick? What the fuck? Josh, rapid fire. Come on. Why are you making me think that? Josh, come on. <laughs> Rapid fire, buddy. Come on. I, I think uh, Colin's a little older than Cody. It, is, it cut out. It cut it out. Colin, Colin, Colin. Okay. Would you rather stay <laughs> mentally young forever and have your body age or stay physically young forever and have your mind age? Physically young. Physically young. Which Guinness World it. Record would be easier to beat? Eat greater than 132 blueberries in one minute or eat more than 10 pounds of blueberries in 24 hours. Hold on. <laughs> Ask Where the fuck these questions come from? Okay. I missed the first part. So there's two current Guinness World Records I'm thinking about trying to go after. One is eating more than 132 blueberries in one minute or eating over 10 pounds of blueberries in a 24-hour period. <sighs> 10 pound one 10 pounds okay yeah. would you rather have two long front teeth like a beaver or no teeth at all uh i'd take the beaver teeth okay <laughs> yeah if you could know the exact date and time you were going to die would you want to know or not no i wouldn't want to know I, i'm right there with you you have to either eat a half a dozen potatoes cold without peeling them like they're apples or a half dozen green bananas with the peel on which one would you rather eat? The bananas. Who would you rather have build your kids a treehouse? Jordan Spiegelberg or Adam Spiegelberg? <laughs> <laughs> come on, Josh. Rabbit Fire. Rabbit Fire, you agreed to come on this show, Josh. Come on. Right. These guys are both handy. I don't want to offend one of them. Well, you got to pick one. Okay. It'd All be right. made I'm out of go. concrete. I'm going to go with Jordy. Okay. Would you rather go to a vegan barbecue or a cookout where the person hosting grills all the steaks extra well done? I'll take the steaks well done. Who would be more likely to win in a horse race as a jockey, Mike Connie or Mike Ott? Probably Mike Ott. I can see that. All right, that's all we've got for you there for rapid fire. Do you feel a little, you feel it in the air? You're a little loosened up now? That was different. <laughs> I'll just say that, that. was different. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to uh, our professional uh, question analysis uh, producer, Mr. Tyler Saw. For those of you that want to know, Tyler does orchestrate all these questions himself. Yeah. Not Absolutely. Sure it actually it's blows my mind. He'll get on there and we, like I'm busy working and stuff and we have the, a setup call and we kind of talk about potentially Tyler's always like, I got 15 rapid fire questions. And it's like, dude, this is amazing. And what you come up with is just gold. It those, really those, is. Those are real Guinness World Records. Right? What's up? The Naked and Afraid is definitely not. hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that caught me off guard. Yeah, you were a little caught off guard on that one. And ju oh. just, just to put it on the record, uh, Adam and I offered to try to help out these questions. And yeah. Tyler was like, no. No, hell no! I don't need no help. I got this. Yeah. Me, no, so. I, he's got I, it. I he's no got assistant. it. Shout out to shout out to Josh and Tyler for one of the highlights of the Mo Practice Podcast, the rapid fire questions. Yeah, thanks for playing, Josh. Along. Josh, twenty twenty four. You know, we don't b believe in rumors on this podcast. We just kind of call them what they are. Twenty twenty four is approaching. What is your pulling fa pulling uh, plans as a competitor in twenty twenty four? Um, so I'm actually probably just going to be working in the shop and contributing, uh, that way, um, down in Louisville this year. Um, that was my last, uh, on a super stock for now. Um, Mike's son, Cody, uh, he's been wanting to drive a long time. He's starting to get some seat time. He's doing really well. Uh, he wants to take over in the light glass and, Mike basically has a decision. Okay. Is Josh or is Terry going to drive? And, um, you know, what would you do? You know, he's, he's going to go 
he's going to go with Terry. So Terry and Cody will actually be campaigning these tractors. Um, I'll be, uh, I'll be working in the shop, keeping that open. Uh, I'll get to spend some more time with the kids. So, um, had a lot of good times on those tractors and, uh, we did a lot of, a lot of winning, a lot of fun stuff. A lot of goals were accomplished. Um, a lot of ups, downs, you know, and everything that goes with it. But, uh, I got a shout out Mike and his family, uh, for allowing me to, uh, to do this so long with them. I had a, I've had a blast, but Cody has been, uh, he's been around it. Uh, matter of fact, the first tractor that we built considered, uh, it was a light super stock. Uh, the day we got it done and we decided to take it to a local, local pole up Northern Wisconsin. Uh, that was the day Cody was born. Mike couldn't make it to the pole. And I remember it was, uh, myself, Brian Korth and Terry, uh, they were, they were like, okay, who's going to drive it? Mike's not here. Um, Brian didn't want to drive it. My dad said, screw it. You know, I'll hop on it and drive it. I think he got second place with it. That's how it kind of all started. And, um, Cody's been to about every single event we've, we've been at, you know, and, and he's been watching, he's been listening. Um, he, uh, you know, anything we tell him, uh, he'll, you know, he'll listen and, uh, you know, he, he's just doing a great job. So yeah, it looks so like out of the so box, like the kids really taking on and like even at first couple runs and just like, holy shit, this kid's uh, doing a good job. You got yeah, good equipment. Yeah. You guys are really setting him up good. I'm sure you guys um, would never stick him on something that would be unsafe. Uh, yeah. Set him up good. He kind of took it and ran and he's really done a real, I think he's done a really good job um, um, taking over, you know, taking over some of the driving duties. So. You yeah, hang on a second. Hang on a second. I, I will take a Chase tally. Give me again. a tally. Give me a tally. This is uh, this is. I'm not very happy about this. I'm not saying I'm not happy, but you know, we've had a lot of laughs, a lot of good times, a lot of high notes. We broke breaking news in the pulling world on this show. I don't know if we've ever had a somber moment where I'm looking for tissues because Josh Blackburn is not going to be pulling this summer. Sad. Are you kidding me? I'm calm. like, I'm bullshit. I'm kind of. Like I'm kind of butt hurt right now. That's uh, that's not. I mean, you know, everyone has decisions to make. But dude, you you are we, a rock star s- in this sport, man. I mean, I, I'm getting ready to cry. Can we I, need can to I see Odom's trailer with the music going and you know partying <laughs> on. Uh, I'm gonna. So we I'm gonna miss you pool? We won't see you at pools. Uh, no, I'll, I'll probably make it to some pools, but uh, definitely going to be focused on keeping our shop open and taking advantage of that. I mean. Normally, uh, when we leave and go pull for Mike, I mean, we shut this down here, you know, and uh, we, we we just have a ton of work to do. Um, and I got customers I want to keep happy. And, uh, we're, we're a small team. So, I mean, everybody counts here. Everybody has their part. And uh, just keeping focused uh, um, is is what I'm going to try to capitalize on now that this has happened. So, well, that's what I was going to say before uh, Chase kind of fucking interrupted me there. But I was just going to say, like, you guys had some pretty big check marks off there, like to basically run six tractors of mics, not on top of all the other gasmers and all the other customers that you guys are working on. But like you guys checked off a lot of things. I mean, you guys went first, second and third numerous times and as somebody that has the three vehicles like it's everything you strive for we finished first second and third one time and you guys have done it numerous times and in the points you guys have done, i mean you guys really had some big big checks there your success if you are stepping away from a little to be a dad and keep the business going anything now's the best time to do it really yeah i mean like i got four kids i got i got three girls and a boy and um I love spending time with them, but you know, at the same time, it, it's not just about, I mean, it's going to pulls. I mean, almost every single pull we go to has a ton of activities for these kids and, and they love doing it, you know, as they get older. Sure. Um, I'm sure we could put something together and it, it won't be the last time I'm out there. I just don't know how long it will be before I would. You I'm know, not happy. I'm not home. happy with this. Yeah, I'm not either. This, 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 this is uh, Josh, Josh, hang on a second. Do, do we, so, We've we've created T-shirt brands that have sold. By the way, go to Full Pull, get your fo- No Practice Podcast shirts. Uh, Shameless for, plug. We, yeah. we, we've created pl- shirts for pullers. Uh, 
like on that's been on this podcast. Do we get a free Josh Blackburn shirt to get you back out there? I mean, no. this kid, this is a, this is unacceptable. Like a free Josh Blackburn T-shirt, or I mean, hell, I got mini rods. You got? Were you, were you getting a mini rod? We can't. This oh. is unacceptable, dude. Will you drive a mini rod? Absolutely. I I love being out there, and it doesn't matter what class it is. Um, I'd absolutely drive one. I don't know if you'd want want me for the weight aspect, but oh, um, I'm pretty beefy. I don't think you weigh much more than me. <laughs> I'm 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 uh, checking in at 260. Okay, you got me beat. I'm like 230. Seriously though, the the, the high haters, the free Josh Blackburn shirts will be on sale yeah. as early as and, next week. And, and uh, we see the comments uh, rolling in. This yeah. is almost as heartbreaking as hearing about Toby Keith passing. Josh, I oh, I'm just I'm getting the real. Uh, I don't, I don't think I changed any, anybody's lives by uh, driving in an open super, but ah, uh, you never know. You never know. Hey, I'm getting you know, a real CG. like parent sends their kid off to college vibe here. Um, <laughs> like, you know, you're you're saying goodbye, but you know the goodbye isn't forever. When it yeah. comes down to it, whose decision was it for the kid to go to college? Was it yours or somebody else's? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where you're going with this, but. Um, yeah, it's definitely going to be, it, it's going to be tough. You know, when Toma rolls around, that's going on. I'll be back at the shop. Those guys will be out on the road pulling. It, it's, it's going to be emotional, but I'll get, I'll get through it. It's not um, emotional. You're joining our teams. You're going to drop yep. mini rods, <laughs> mini rods. We got, uh, mods, two wheel drives. We'll put you in something. Yeah. I yeah. mean, CJ, since CJ grozik has got everything control under control now with his new job at Simon says motorsports. You won't even have to work on that pro stock. <laughs> that sounds good to me. So, oh so, so, my next question: um, If I was a bet man uh, and I wanted to bet a over and under on Josh Blackburn driving one vehicle or zero vehicles in summer twenty twenty four, would you bet the over or under if you were me? Oh, it's it's not going to happen. You're not driving. I'm calling, I'm, 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 calling bullshit. I'm calling bullshit. Something's going to happen. Bullshit. There's going to be. Hey, every class counts, whether it's uh, antique pulling or uh, super farm or um, super stock. You will be on a vehicle this year. I'm calling BS. You'll be driving something. I've had a few pullers just text me about saying you, you can drive their stuff anytime. So, right. uh, I'm calling BS, Josh. And whenever you do drive something, we'll be sure to call you out on it. But so, yeah. Yeah. heartbreaking news. I hate to hear that. Uh, this is the most somber no practice podcast ever. But you know, uh, like all good, like all things in life, good things coming to an end. And I highly anticipate you will be back out kicking everybody's ass in some other vehicle here soon. Yeah, all I right. think I'm going to pull a Trump on that announcement and say, fake news, that's not the case. You're going to be back in a tractor, and we all know it. <laughs> You're pretty good at that. Yeah, yeah. J Josh, so I guess since you're a former super stock puller, um, if you had to win one pull, you had your own tractor. Obviously, we know you build badass tractors, badass parts. You had to have one tractor – to win a pool and you had to stick somebody not named Blackbird in the seat to win that pool, who are you sticking in it? Uh, Hang on. I feel like we got to eliminate the standard go-tos, though. We need somebody new, right? Well, uh, he's try he's got to win one pool. One pool. Oh, this is okay. this is this is I'll uh shut up. I'll shut up. Yeah, Sorry. This, this is the to win that uh ten million dollars rather than going to prison for a year uh okay. if you win this okay. one pool. But they can't have the last thing, Blackburn. Who are you sticking in the seat? I'm gonna probably go with Korth. He knows our stuff. He's he's pulled our equipment a lot. I mean, that's that's the obvious go-to for me. All right. Second part. They can't be. They can't be anybody you've ever been a teammate teammate of. There we go. Ooh. Ooh. I don't know. That's a, that's really tough. There's a lot of names. Um. You you agree to come on the show? Not not. You didn't volunteer, uh, so you, you got to answer. Right, this I got point. distracted by Adam's wife. <laughs> um, That'll happen. She she does that to people. Yeah, Evan she's knows. still uh, 
it's really cool. She cuts people's hairs at these poles and stuff. It's insane. She's still doing that. I don't think we ever talked about that. We never talked about that on the show. Tell Adam, tell everybody about that a little bit. That's about well, actually, I believe um, you know even one of the most high dollar haircuts that Jamie's done has been Tyler Slaw. Well, uh, what about uh, Mr. Uh, the name's escaping? Oh, that's true. Ear, Earhart at, last year. Yeah, yeah Justin Earhart. Take yeah. that back. Yeah, I yeah, forgot. He, it was like. He he trounced me. I think mine only raised like eight thousand dollars when I cut my hair. And what did he get? It was it was five figures. I mean, mine was chump change. Yeah, Jamie's got the on the road uh, pulling cuts, and I mean, there's been numerous people who've been haircut have had the haircut buyer. Um, actually, if you look at the uh, on screen display or the the intro of the show. Whoever picked that avatar of myself, that was after just a cleanup on the sides and the hair is kind of really messed up. And I go, yeah, she got in a hurry and just kind of cleaned it up. So my hat would cover, you know, would would only show a nice sh shaved side. But she's um, yeah, you look great, man. Thanks for thanks for letting me know you look great. She yeah. she um, cut Roger Simon's hair all the time. Roger was always very, uh, very friendly and give her a, a big tip like when she goes to the pools if if we could just amass the money that she's made um on these make-a-wish cuts and just the pulling people uh paying her i may i may be able to quit working wow. <laughs> that's, a, that's that's yeah. what we do here on the uh, no practice podcast is we really break down the hair cutting industry and the tractor pulling i world. mean everybody uh, on this screen except for josh has had their hair cut by my wife i'm pretty that's sure true, which which is statistically josh, odd because the amount of haircuts i've gotten is just oh so few um josh may have had it cut by her uh, before y'all are married you don't know that that's possible. Uh, yeah, she possible. wasn't around. She wasn't around. <laughs> uh, Josh, so yeah. now now that you're talking about retiring, and we all know that turbos are allowed in the mini rod class, and there's really no limitation to turbos whatsoever. With our cubic inch limits, with the rule set we have at our disposal, how much horsepower do you think you could theoretically make with one of our motors in a mini rod? Well, it depends. It can you guys tell me an honest number where you're at right now? Is it 20? Oh. Is it <laughs> no, 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 no. I would say, I would say on, on a good basis, everybody in the class with top notch equipment, somewhere in that 2,800 to 3,000 horsepower. You Depending on the dyno. Or, or about 2,650 all, all, all about the dyno. Yeah. Uh, yeah. On the dyno. Okay. What do you think you could make? Jeez. Oh, I never thought you guys, I didn't think you guys were at 3,000. Well, I mean, okay. I'll, 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 Adam, Adam I'll, I'll make I'm a not. statement here real quick, yeah, and, I'm and not Chase either. may know this too, but like we have uh, Pro Charger cars and twin turbo cars. Um, now it all goes off the dyno, so you don't know. You could you could throw some outrageous numbers out there. I've heard close to you know six thousand horsepower on Pro Charger, but come on, I'm like that's ridiculous. I I think with twin turbos. A guy, if he got to five thousand horsepower with one of our engines, would be um, massive. Yeah, I come on. That that seems like nonsense talk, right, Josh? It's all about the dyno number, right? Why can't I mean? Why, why wouldn't you want to stage them? Well, you cannot single stage of compression. Oh, you okay. cannot have turbochargers feeding turbochargers according to our wonderful rule book. Yeah, I guess I've never. I don't know your guys' uh, rules, but um, yeah, but still, a single turbo we, we would don't, we don't be either. adequate to do whatever. Yeah, we just ask Chase what the new rules are. <laughs> is, is that? Yeah, I know you can make more power with the turbos, and I, I wholeheartedly believe that. How um, much more? <laughs> shit, I have no idea. Let's do one. Oh. I, come on, you're sandbagging on us. I feel like you got a number in mind. Okay. I do one, Josh. I'd be interested to do that. I'll, maybe I'll stick an engine together sometime and we'll just bring it up there. Now, yours has to be on the chassis dyno, though, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And I, so. ha I have had people ask me to dyno mini rods on that. And what did okay, you say? So we, 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 we've seen pro I'm stocks, we've seen super stocks, we've seen all these vehicles on there. What is. I mean, basically, you make a hub that fits our planetary and bingo, right? Yeah. We'd get your bolt pattern and pilot, and then uh, we'd make a flange. 
that would mount onto your um, your axle planetary, mm-hmm. and and then we bolt it up to the dyno. We'd have to put some type of stand, which I already would have for the diesel. Well, uh, I, I, <laughs> I guess I guess the question would be, you know, with a mini rod, if, uh, if we're talking gear ratios between like a mini rod at nine or ten to one, and then you have like a two wheel drive at you know eighteen uh, to twenty three to one i don't know what the big tractors probably you know That's where their fast. gear ratios run where where would the mini rod gear ratio you know do you have to put an equation into the the dyno for that amount of wheel speed or yep. is that what the the faster it is the faster your final drive is the easier it is on the dyno um really yeah we could do a hold test swiss come up into whatever rpm band you want sweep it down when while you're open with the throttle and right. um, it, yeah, the, the easier it is for the, um, the gains and, and nope. things like that. It's in gains we can play with. So it doesn't punch you right away when you're, when it's bringing up resistance against your motor, we can cradle it, cradle it. Right. So and, you guys do gentle. the same thing that like a, a water brake dyno does in, in, in the fact of like they control the RPMs per second. Right, so yeah. you're looking at 400 RPMs per second, 700 RPMs per second, whatever. Now, an inertia dyno is just a weight, and the engine pulls that weight at a given speed, and that's where the horsepower is. The numbers come from torque and horsepower come from the the how fast it accelerates that weight. So, water brakes a little bit different. So, I didn't know how these hub dynos work. You know, if, if they're is there's there water, a, there's brake kind of deal. No. no uh, it's eddy current. It, it's big electromagnet with flywheels that gives you the resistance. There's a simple jack shaft that goes to an S block, and that S block has an embedded sensor, and it reads your torque off the pressure that is applied to the S block. Well, so basically, you're dying on the engine off of electromagnets. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. And uh, the passes are so quick that we really don't build up a lot of heat that we would need to dissipate. Hmm. Right. right on with that, Kyle Borton. Uh, Chase, Chase, sounds, Chase sounds, is uh, sounds Chase head. is really confused. I mean, we <laughs> saw his math a couple of shows ago when he tried to figure out the math for the farm show. It took twenty uh, minutes did, to do simple math, but whatever. We did great math there, Adam. I don't know what you're talking about, uh, Josh. We, just, we, we, we did that. enough. Hey, we did enough math for their for their lawyer to email us. Oh, did yeah. I say that? Hey, Ooh. easy now. Let's make friends, Ooh. not burn bridges, sunshine. Come on now. Josh, we'll allow you to sidestep some questions, but some not so much. So how much horsepower do you really think you could make with one of these mini rod motors? Or at least tell us how much boost you think you could make. I have no idea. And the boost would be unlimited. Well, actually, no, you can't oh. stay. I'd like to stage the turbos so you, you can be a little snappy out of the hole. You can grow those tires, yeah. set it. You put the twin turbos on there. I don't know. You have to jack around in the hole a lot more to get things wound up. I would think. Josh, can your uh, dyno help people become better drivers? If so, when can I get my appointment? <laughs> that, 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 no, you, you can't oh, teach geez. it. You get out there and do it. You know. So, so, so literally, for people that don't know this, um, you know, we think dyno people put engines on dynos, but in his. And I don't know the proper term for it, and I am very confused. Whoever said that, uh, Tyler, pull up, pull up a video of the, of the dyno. Me? Backstage guy, pull one OJ, up. OJ, OJ. Yeah, I yeah, mean, we got a producer of this show yeah. that he's let, about let, as let smart as Chase comes when it comes to this dyno talk. So, <laughs> but it's, <laughs> he's it's gonna pretty be a little bit slow. <laughs> to, uh, it's pretty interesting uh, because people literally strap up, and, we're, and we will get to that footage. Uh, he, we did prepare for this. We're not that advanced, Josh. We are the best podcast at pulling, but we're still working out some kinks. But people That's literally put, put their fire suits and helmets on, and like they're sitting there, like driving the vehicle, like it's on the track. That's why I said, "Can it make you a better mini rod driver?" But apparently, it can. Well, uh, but we will get back yeah. to you with that footage uh, before so, the show ends. I have a waiver you sign. Because you are you are in the room. There's pros and cons to everything, but you are in this room. You're you're sitting in your own tractor, and we require to have all the safety stuff you would normally have on to pull out a track. Um, 
So Marvin's there teching you right before you run on that dyno. Oh. Yeah, we, we have a picture of Marvin that you're that you're looking at. But uh, <laughs> so does you know, Tyler's having... bedroom. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love Marvin. He's my boy. We were Sorry, talking girl. earlier about give me one, sandwiches give me a tally and, together and safety. So um, one of the great <laughs> safety rules I think we have is uh, everybody's required to run an engine cable. And you have to put that engine cable between one and two cylinders. So it's looping up through your manifold. It's it's looping back down uh, between one and two on your intake runners. And and then it's getting tied together. Um, I've seen that work really well. Um, and I'm glad we have that rule. It, the reason they have it between one and two is so if the engine comes apart and you have of explosion, um, it allows the cylinder head to come forward instead of back harming the driver and it uh it lets things come apart but it it, it contains it it catches it and that that's a great rule that we have tell, and i'm glad, glad we have it tell us about your most catatastrophic failure on the dyno that's what we all want to hear about we with honestly, names with names i hate to bore you but we're um when we go okay in an aspect of tuning somebody's engine or running or running something on the dyno, uh, we're doing some short passes. We're talking one to two second passes, and then we're trying to monitor that data to catch anything we could possibly catch moving forward. And as we start to feel comfortable with the engine and what's going on in there, uh, we'll do longer passes. So um, I don't really have a lot of excitement for you. Um, I think. Uh, I think Jeff Holden was the only one that really blew up on our dyno. Uh, okay. He kicked it. Let's hear about it. Um, <laughs> and he brought that his was before you started working on it, right? It it was. Uh, he brought his uh, tractor up to the dyno, and uh, he before we um, we made a pass on it, he wanted to uh, show us the connecting rods that he was currently running and the bolts, and he was just testing out some of the hardware and like the thickness and strength of the connecting rods he had. Um, he wanted to pull the pan off and look at something anyways. So he was, uh, he went out to the hauler and grabbed a connecting rod and he had that in one hand. That was, that was a previous connecting rod he had ran years before. He had the other one in his hand that he had just taken or the, the main cap anyways, or the, the rod cap in his other hand. And we were looking at like, you know, we were looking at like a cross sectional view or anything, but we were just looking at the, you know, different things with this connecting rod. Somehow he accidentally switched up the bolt that's supposed to go back into the main cap. So when he put the main cap back on the engine while it was on our dyno, he was bolting this main cap up into a blind hole. So he was able, it was just close enough that he was able to torque the bolt. And I'm sure to him that everything felt right, but that cap was able to have some, some end play. Oh, the first oh. pass he had made with it, um, it kicked a rod because the bolt wasn't sure. uh, securing the, uh, the, it did that. The rod of course comes out the block. It hit a bunch of fuel lines and there was a real fast explosion. Um, and that's Ooh. about the most exciting thing I've seen. Well, that's pretty exciting. Was it, yeah. did the fire department show up? That's why you guys uh, got all the like, caution tape and shit all over everything. Like, <laughs> sometimes uh we'll be running the dyno we'll be doing like a pro stock or, or a diesel tractor it'll be during the daytime and we're blowing smoke out the top of the building we're right in town and uh you will get curious people just stop in they'll pop in the door and they're like uh hey just i just want <laughs> to make sure that, that the billing isn't on fire but i mean you can totally tell they just want to be in there to, to, to peek around and see what's going on yeah, i mean you right. can't blame them What's that, that's so I, I have to ask you about this guy. Um, now, I don't know whose tractor that is in particular, but let's just say I know a guy from Kentucky that um, I actually was down in Tanner, Alabama years and years ago. I went with Mike Hoppy when you're down there. Yeah. And uh, Mike Wilhite um, blew one up. Uh, yeah, mid track. And we call him Crispy to the day because yeah. of it. And, uh, you know, I know Will Heights now a customer. You guys, correct? 
Or he's uh, bought some stuff here. Used your yeah, dino yeah. services, I guess. Right? Yeah, he has. He's actually uh we're talking to him about building him a motor right now. I hope he goes through with it. I I, yeah. I really enjoy working uh with him. He's he's a fun guy. Um, Mike's an awesome, awesome dude. I like I Mike love, a lot. Love your stories. Yeah, he's good. Maybe dude. that'll be our one of our next um I wish there was practice uh, moments because that was a massive uh fire. The dude, he caught on fire, right? He caught on fire. Well, right. the trash was going on the track. Tan Alabama was a mid south pool, like one of their best pools, you know, their grand marquee of pools, I guess I would say. And we were there and he got halfway down the track. I was standing back by the uh, old tree at the starting line and that thing went up in flames. He had his visor open and it like burned his face up pretty bad, but it was, it was a massive fire. Yeah. Um, but you're talking a lot of shit in one of those engines, you know. I don't know what you guys run. I'm going to throw some numbers out there probably. From a safe side, 95 pounds of boost probably if you're getting up there, probably 130. You know, I, d- I don't know on the numbers, but that's a lot of sure. air going in those um, big cast iron junkyard blocks, as you say. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, of course they are cast you, iron. Go ahead, Jason. No, no, no. If, for those of you podcast uh, recorded listeners, sorry you can't indulge in this, but Josh, all our live viewers, there is a clip here uh, that our executive pro- backstage producer found. Um, basically, you see a tractor uh, from the roll cage four that looks like a pulling tractor minus the hood, but, you know, anything there that can be talked about, like, that's uh so first off that's the smoke blown through there you mentioned that just going into town uh through your little ventilation system yeah yeah so uh this building uh that we're in now uh we've we've moved up from uh the two car garage to a 2000 square foot pole shed and we found this old abandoned um building it's 40,000 square foot uh it's just Damn. huge compared to what we wanted wow. to build but uh, so it had been a for over a decade, and uh, it used to be a um, uh, like in the seventies. It was a machine shop. They had over a hundred employees. Then it was a fiberglass company, and they had all these explosion-proof uh, exhaust fans on the ceiling. And Perfect. when we remodeled this place, we took some of those fans and uh, got them into the ceiling, and um, we kind of built that um, that exhaust uh, extraction system from that, and uh, the reason being, we wanted to put so much effort into that is so when when um, customers come and dyno with us, uh, we're never having to like fab up special things to exhaust things out of the building. You know, we're not hooking mm-hmm. anything to their exhaust pipes, and there's nothing touching the tractor. So, if you think about a time saver. Um, that, that's kind of what we were going for there. So we, we, yeah, cause you can maneuver the dyno anywhere you want, really just line up the exhaust and you're good to go. Right. Yeah, exactly. The dyno is mobile. And, um, another thing to talk about is, uh, some of the customers, while we bring them up on load, they're worried about like their chassis flexing or moving around. You know, you know, I get asked several times, like, is it gonna, is it gonna bend my chassis? My chassis is really, you know, it's different than the other guys, you know, it's really thin walled tubing. Like I don't want to wreck it. And, uh, if you, if you, if you can see there that we have load binders and, uh, we have like nylon rigging straps, um, that are in certain spots along the belly of the tractor and in the front tractor, um, you know, bend, move around. I mean, if you, if you knew how much your chassis was moving when you're going down the track anyways, it, it's much more than what it is there. But uh, we're trying to, uh, you know, uh, take stress off the chassis. Well, that's obviously a diesel super, so we're talking a lot of torque. Shit probably yeah, would be moving around. I yeah, guess. in this particular video, uh, he had some water lines that broke. Um, it wasn't really a good pass to see, but... Um, yeah, this is a diesel super. Uh, Brad Campbell um, is his name. Uh, he went down to uh, Louisville. He was up here trying to tune this in um, to go to Louisville. And down in Louisville, uh, I think he one of his turbochargers uh, snapped. And I know he was trying to he was trying to work with I think Weimer um, on getting some better chargers for this tractor. 
uh, and wasn't able to get him in time for the dyno. So he took, uh, um, I don't know if he uh, bought these from Doug Messenger um, or who he got them from, but I know he was trying to get some, uh, some stronger turbos for that tractor. Really cool stuff. So the future, since you're you're done super stop pulling, your future could be a mini rod pulling. I see some future mini rod passes taking place there on that dyno uh, to improve drivability and to prepare you for your new endeavor. You all good with that? Yeah, yeah. It sounds like you got to figure it out. <laughs> let's uh, let's talk about how much more intimidating a pulling tractor is on the dyno compared to driving down the track. Because like when we've dynoed our engines. To see that thing just sitting in a room with four walls and a low ceiling around it, and that thing's running wide open, to me at least, it is a thousand times more intimidating. Like when we dynoed our first motor, I'm sitting there wide-eyed, and the thing gets done, and I'm like, that was wild. And that was Darren wild. Was, I sent... I sit six inches off the bell housing yeah, of this yeah, thing. Yeah, Darren's I mean, like, what are you talking about, in a wild? He's like, he's like, you wrap your feet around that engine block. I'm like, yeah, but it's moving, and it, it's completely different. I'm like, I wouldn't want to stand within 15 feet of that thing when it's on the dyno. Like, oh, how, yeah. how terrifying is it sitting in the seat compared to being outside, Josh? Oh, I'm, I'm actually glad you asked that question. It is totally different. And, uh, I mean, as far as you get a nice sense of how the tractors can react and the clutch and – you know, how you want to, uh, you know, go about that. But uh, when you're in that room and you're sitting fixed and you unleash, you know, like, like, a, like for instance, we have an open super on there and that thing, when it lights, I mean, it is very loud. It's ear piercing. And you have to think we have four chargers on some of these tractors. It's muffling a lot of the sound, um, yeah. but it is still incredibly loud, much louder than it is in an outdoor event. And, uh, for someone that comes in dinos here the first time, you can always tell, like, you know, they, they might hide it, but they're they're You can tell they're very nervous. And after they get a couple passes in, everything kind of melts away and it, it's, it's, it's fun. But uh, for someone that's sitting on it for the first time, it, it it's, it's pretty intense. Yeah. It's like a freaking bomb going off. Like it's, it's wild. Yeah. Like one of our very first passes on the dyno, the first handful of passes, we, uh detonated it and snapped a blower belt the blower belt hit the glass we were standing behind my dad's face was bleeding everybody's ears were ringing nobody know what the hell happened steve olson was there steve olson from simon steve had blood on his face just it was it was wild we're like what just happened <laughs> like i it's so hard to explain i it's guess like we're it seemed to brave it. heart it's like yeah, a you, seriously, you you put those things in a room, and it is hard to describe how intimidating they are. So I'm glad yeah. to hear when you're behind the wheel, it's kind of the same concept. I think it'd be really cool to do an open super stock with one pro stock charger on it. I think it'd be loud as hell. I've always wanted to try that. How long? Well, you're how long do we got to wait to see that? Like I was just telling you, you know, four chargers. Um, it muffles the sound a little bit. They're not as loud. I think if we put one pro stock charger on a 650 cubic inch motor running on alcohol, I think it'd be really badass. Let's do it. I just don't know if it probably wouldn't have the bottom end. <laughs> um, well, okay. If we're talking about that kind of stuff, like walk us through the old back at, uh, you know, like when, when, um, oh, Larry Roberts brought out the double stuff. Right, the two inline sixes on on the on the modified chassis. I think it would be badass to see two of those V eights that you guys have hey. kind of mastered on on a chassis. I think that'd be badass. We had we had one guy come up to our shop. Um, I can't remember his name. I maybe I'll think about it here. But he was friends with uh, the Whitworth family. Um, if you guys don't know who they are, they pull light supers. They have three tractors. Um, they're white and green. Um, so they talked to him, Scott, the dad that, uh, funds that operation. He talked this guy to come up in here and that's what he wanted to do. And when he sat, he sat in our office and we're having this meeting about doing this tractor. I mean, I am just smiling ear to ear. Like I'm, I'm jacked. Like I want to do it. I want to do it bad. And right. the guy goes, well, I'm getting a little older and, I don't have much time left. Can you do it for me this year? Can you have it done? And we just had 
a oh, lot of jobs. Swamped. And You're swamped. Dad's like, ah, it's definitely not going to happen for this year. Um, I'm sorry, but if you want to do it, we can take some money down. You know, we'll get started started on this whenever we can. And I mean, it was just a no deal from right there. It was sad to see. Because wow. what are those? What are those things make? Roughly power wise, I mean, I know you can't tell us exactly, but like, you know, if you've got ten thousand horse, two two engines, yeah, if you you've got, make, you can make five thousand horse without pushing it pretty easy. See, that's yeah. badass. That'd be perfect. That's all like, I'm gonna say. You'd, yeah, that's, actually, that's, if, that's well, if you want to live for a, a whole entire season without working. As much horsepower as Adams Motors make. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah. No, I. Uh, it's a cool motor. We're, we're still learning about that project. You know, we're still tearing stuff up with that. It's not like it lives forever, but, um, you know, like on some of our six cylinder stuff, it's not crazy to get, you know, 25, 27 passes. Um, I know Bob Gansmer stuff's here, uh, right now, uh, Brandon block, uh, is actually has them both tore down our shop looking at all these parts and they, and they look great, you know, and, and they're, uh, one of their tractors won, uh, the points against, uh, Mike's team. Uh, this yeah, year, right. uh, that Zane Delhi was driving that, and um, free Josh Blackburn shirts are for sale on the full pool site. Carry on, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, okay, know. we had a little break there. We're gonna ask the, the good questions now. So, you guys have three pulling vehicles, I don't see the hoods up on them very much. So, you guys get back from the, the track, it's late. You guys push the tractors in the trailer. I know you guys got your little old setup with your lights and your music. Big, same thing you get going in the shop there. But you're cruising around the pits at night. Who's trailer stopping by to see what's going on? Like, where, where, where's your go-to guys to? Hey, it's Toma or here or there. Where am I going to go to check out? Um, I, if Jeff Holdem's around, you know, I'm usually over by his stuff. The guy, uh, he's an entertainer. He's always fun to be around. He, he brings karaoke. He's got the speakers set up. You know, he's guaranteed going to be one of my stops. Um, I love going over to Bowers, and uh, they're always partying. You know, they're out and about. Um, I don't think their their trailers as fun as Jeff. But you know, if over there, um, shit, I don't know. I've been going to these polls for so long. It depends what. I mean, some of these places I go, I know where the best place to eat or what the best spot. I like going, you know, going downtown or, I, you know, going out. Moving. Well, you yeah. guys do that. I think you guys go to Benson or something. You guys, guys go down maybe a couple of days early, try to hit the beach. Uh, a couple yeah, days. We'll, we'll hit the beach and, uh, you know, try to get acclimated for a little bit. It's such a long drive down there. You know, you're, you're a little sore and, and tense when you get down there. And it's nice. I parked park the rig at the pole uh, at Earl's pole and then, um, you know, we get a, a rental and head down to the beach a couple of days. Um, that's kind of like my only vacation I get, honestly, is the start of the year right there. Um, so Tyler does the same thing. He kind of shows up at a pool and he'll hang out. and But he's always into venturing out, like, and finding the bars and everything. And I think oh, yeah. Henry or something, or one of these pools, he went out and found a bar and came back on a scooter and maybe Ooh. screwed up his shoulder for the rest of his life. But I remember man. that. <laughs> yeah, se separated my collarbone from my shoulder blade on a uh, max speed 20 mile per hour electric scooter at about one in the morning. That uh, happens. I remember that. that. You'll, that you'll have that. We knew that it was bad when you, when you didn't want to drive the next day. Yeah. I wasn't so, driving. Still, yeah, I, I knew it was, <laughs> it was pretty serious. Tyler, Tyler, what led to that uh, unfortunate event? Would you mind indulging? Uh, just a couple of beverages, Chase, for the most part. I think it was uh, uh, similar to that bottle of Woodford sitting back there. You're drinking, uh, you call them mixers, right? Because there's whiskey and ice in it. I didn't, yeah, you gotta... I didn't know you get into bourbon. <laughs> oh, yeah, come cream? on. You knew that. No, no I, did, I did not. Yeah. That's because yeah. you and I are usually too busy, you know, playing flip cup and chugging beers. Oh, uh, remember what our friend earlier in the show said. Remember what our friend, our fan earlier in the show said. There's more to tractor pulling than drinking beer. Uh, yeah. Shout out to you, whoever said that. Uh, thanks for being a follower of No Practice Podcast. The only reason Chase says that because nobody hangs at his trailer like Josh, <laughs> like people do at Josh Blackburn's. I mean, I seen you guys <laughs> I at. Uh, I seen you at uh, Lucas. What's see here, Wheatland? You guys had a pretty good, unique setup going on over there. Maybe. 
maybe while the lights were getting turned on or off. I don't know if you had anything to do with that, but yeah. And by the way, yeah, for, pool, pool, poolers aren't allowed back there after that event. Yeah, yeah nice job, Josh. That was, that was the last time that there was a pool. There. I'm not okay. taking all the heat for that, but I did get some stuff started, and uh, God, that was just such a good night. It was one of those nights you didn't want to turn the lights off. You know, you just didn't want to stop. Right. And, if you're a promoter, uh, if you're a promoter in a local community somewhere. And you want to really grow your your event year by year? Don't invite Josh Blackburn because you will get shut down. <laughs> hey, no, no, no! Don't throw Josh's name under the bus here. He was he was just partaking in the activities of the night, and some hooligan was running around turning the lights on off in the in the pit area, <laughs> and they may or may not have really got pissed about it. Uh, you know, Josh when Blackburn I'm partying, had nothing to do with that. If I'm partying and hanging out with my friends, I ain't going to be around fucking off. Taking now, the I will say this. This may be the funniest thing ever that happened at Wheatland in, in, in my mind. So we're sitting there, and this guy, maybe a couple of people, I don't know, we're running around turning lights on. I don't know what was going on. So we're all at Hodum's trailer, right? And he's got his big Bose speakers out there. He's Music's blaring, and people are singing and all this stuff. This guy on this four-wheeler shows up, right? And he walks in the trailer trying to tell Hodum to turn the shit down because it's just blaring. But he's really there because they got pissed that people are turning lights on and off. <laughs> so while this guy is in the trailer bitching at Hodum, I see three guys out of the corner of my eye grab this dude's four-wheeler and it disappears, right? Thing rolls off. It's gone. <laughs> this is all allegedly. This is why this is the best podcast. I'm not. This is why this is the best podcast in pulling. Carry on. <laughs> so the four wheeler disappears for a couple of minutes, and all the good dude's still in there trying to get Jeff turning shit down. He does not listen to him whatsoever. The guy walks out. The fucking four wheeler's gone. Right, and he turns He's around. Security. He goes back into Jeff trying to get the music shut off. To figure out where the four wheeler's at. About that time, <laughs> the four wheeler shows back up. I may or may not have touched the four wheeler, but. They turned the fucking gas off on the thing. We had pulled we pulled the spark plug wire off of it. So the dude comes out and jumps on the four wheeler. Goes to start it up. He throws his hands up in the air. He's so pissed. He's trying to shut us down. We won't listen. The fucking lights keep turning on. They have to leave to turn the lights back off. I mean, fucking lights are popping on everywhere in in the parking lot, and. Josh Blackburn and another group of dudes, I don't know who it is, fuck this dude four-wheeler. <laughs> he can't even drive around to shut the lights off. <laughs> That's the shit that happens at pools that I just love. Like, you we'll guys are terrible. in my mind. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah, the rest of my life. And there's okay. not been a tractor pull of that event since uh, for pulling fans wanting to know the behind the scenes of the pulling world. <laughs> so <Yep. laughs> so there's two years running. Theoretically, that was all made up and none of that was true. Yeah, yeah, but we'll, there's no, there's not there won't be a tractor pull there again. So I can't blame Josh for that. I hate there it because some... it actually had the atmosphere of of a big pull, right? When you come into the 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 racetrack there, I mean that's an awesome place, right? Sure. The sure. track sure. may or may have not been the best, but they have a bar at at the pool, right? And yep. they have suites and all the things. It was a really neat venue. I thought definitely. Definitely. But we I, may or may not that. have run ourselves right out of that place. I feel a little bad about that. You know, that guy was at the wrong place at the wrong time. Like <laughs> we were, we're up, Just we're up here, and this guy comes in here and tries shutting the music off. First thing he does, goes right in there, shut it off, and we're all having a great fucking time. Right. You just, he shouldn't have approached it like that. You know, you don't, <laughs> so you don't charge. He's you don't like, dude, charge the ball. Well, not even that. Don't fuck with people that know how to like work on equipment, right? So yeah. He's over there cranking on the son of a bitch. It won't start. He don't know what to do. He's getting frustrated. Like <laughs> as the life would come back on the him. facility, he couldn't get his poor wheel to run, and then he starts. He, I'm, there's one part of the story that we could change because we gotta get moving on some other stuff. I remember him walking, talking to his guys. He said, "These fucking pullers are back again." <laughs> <laughs> so. Anyway, needless to say, we have not been back, but security guards, promoters, we'd we love, love to you. be back. We won't do it again. I got to talk to in the morning. Somebody's knocking said, on my door. <laughs> he, 
Christie's he asked me, the- all right, Josh, what happened last night? Can you tell oh, me? Oh, really? I never knew there was a lot. And I'm like, did it? <laughs> he said, these pullers are back again. I oh, never God. knew there was like an official talking to. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I went yeah. for that. Oh, the, the first year it happened, there was an official talking to the next day at the fucking driver's meeting. Hey, these lights don't get turned off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> bad, and, bad statement <laughs> yeah it's just like raising kids if you know i have a young kid i mean uh, josh is, has kids that are growing up now the, the worst thing you can tell is kid not to do something because they're gonna do it regardless they told us not to turn the lights on it's like it made it a, a challenge at that point right yeah yeah right. but like our fans said earlier in the show adam there's more to tractor pulling than drinking beer never we weren't that. drinking we weren't I, drinking. We, we, we are we, high on life, buddy. We have a couple. We have a. We have a ton of fan questions. We're, <laughs> we're actually. We always say it. We're going to do some fan questions at the end of the show for Josh. Uh, our numbers are phenomenal, Josh. The news is broken. The somber news that you are retiring, uh, 2024. But I'm betting you'll be back soon. I want to ask a, a question to aside from polling. I think this is really cool, uh, and I bet. A majority of people don't know this. It's March Madness. College basketball is a big topic right now in the country. Uh, obviously, I, I used to do that world for a living. But Josh Blackburn has a brother, uh, and he's Terry's son, too. Uh, you probably wouldn't know if they got side by side, but he is an assistant coach for the University of Wisconsin basketball. Josh, tell us how he was uh, like a normal civilized human that, went and coached kids for a living and, and you're the guy there in the shop uh, <laughs> doing what you do. I'm just kidding. But seriously, I think that's badass. you got a brother that's a coach in the Badgers. And uh, how often do you and your dad get to go to the games? Uh, dad and my mom, they, they go quite a bit. Uh, just almost every home game this year so far. And uh, they're, I, I, my dad really never got into sports, uh, wasn't really big into it. And having Kyle involved in something like that at that scale, he uh, came around. He, he can tell you, uh, you know, every guy's name, where they came from. Uh, I mean, just watching the shows when he can't make it, you know, he's I think they're recording them. Uh, just it's really cool to see him get into something else other than just motorsports. But uh, um, no, it's, it's really neat. Uh, growing up with Kyle, um, we were two different guys. Uh, he never got into this pulling stuff. You know, um, I did, uh, I'd be out riding dirt bikes around, you know, going four wheeling, doing this, that, anything with a motor on it. And, uh, he was just kind of a little bit opposite of that, but, uh, yeah, he, uh, that's really cool what he's doing. And, um, I really, I really, um, I really respect him a lot. The big 10 tournaments coming up this week is your, your parents going, it's in Minneapolis. Is I'm, I'm not mistaken. Are they going up for it? No, no, they can't. They're not going to that, but uh, <clears throat> we'll definitely be watching from home. Cool. The biggest takeaway I got from this is that Terry Blackburn is not only a badass puller, but he raises badass kids. He's got a kid that's a Division One basketball assistant coach and another one who gets pulls uh, shut down forever by turning lights on on and off at night in <laughs> venues. Uh, <laughs> and not to mention he's a, he's a pretty badass uh, CNC and engine builder guy. But Terry Blackburn, shout out to you. Uh, for raising two some some badass kids, so Wisconsin Badger fan here uh, in the postseason and as the season goes along. So love the behind the scenes stories that people may not know. I got one other one here. I want to ask. Um, this is kind of always one we want to as we start to wrap up. And again, we got some fan questions we, we're going to to uh, to bring on. Back to pulling. If there was one thing that Josh Blackburn could change in the sport of pulling to help grow it. Or just wait. First of all, him. you're stealing my question. I oh, 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 okay. I'm sorry. You're sorry, stealing sorry. my question. The, the very first podcast I asked this question. If you're apologize. in charge of pulling, I'm going to interrupt I'm, your I'm ass sorry. because you stole in my question. I, I, I'm I was, sorry. Always wanted to make it wanted to make it a, a a known fact. So you've been around the sport your whole life. If you were in charge for a day or the in charge of pulling, what would be the number one thing that you would change or strive to make better? Um, I'd want to put more money into the announcer's pockets. Um, I want them doing more background. I want them to be more knowledgeable. I want them to be exciting. Um, a huge part of it. 
and uh, <clears throat> in between polls, we need to have when you have sponsors, girls, things for people to look at, have fun with. You know, we need more T-shirts flying in the crowd. Just, just anything. You know, I mean, there's a lot of people that come to these things that don't know a lot about pulling, so they they need to be entertained too. If you want them to come back. Um, you know, whether it's a guy that wants to drink beer, there's a guy that wants to see a concert. There's a guy that wants to look at women. It, it, I don't know. You just need to, you need to try to satisfy everybody and it's hard. And you, it's, well, we know there probably isn't any guys looking at guys. So, um, <laughs> statement there, but, um, all right. So entertainment value, we need to up the entertainment value somehow, some way. Right. I think so. I really do. Um, you know, go down to the Indy 500 and you see right. what, what, what do you see down there? there it's a spectacle, a, man. Yeah. I mean, like do you even watch the race or, you know, there's so many snake different pit. Things. You've been to the snake pit then, right? I have. Yeah. It's a bucket and, list yeah. item, but for sure, just, I, just as well as I think Bowling Green is, I think Bowling Green from what I've heard from a lot of people, it's, it's a bucket list, but we need more of those. We just, you know, we need more than just that one event. Yeah. You guys got pulling is runs deep in Wisconsin. If you were going to put a Wisconsin on the map, pull on the map, which pull would you recommend that people go to? Toma. Toma. No, that's a great national pool. Like I'm talking like a, cool. you guys run Badger State and gone to pools. Is there a pool that in Wisconsin that people need to go to besides Toma? Um, Macville is pretty cool. Yeah, that's a fun wasn't one. Wasn't there like, was there, a, there like a church event, or a church event, or something? There is a church, a and, church and a strip club right across from the church. <laughs> so that's entertainment. You want to grow a pool, and that is entertainment. A church and <laughs> no, a strip club in one there's like a, there's like a coffee shop, shop, a church, and a, a strip club. And I think my <laughs> wife went to the coffee shop and she seen these shirts they were selling there, and she bought. It's like Jesus, titties, and, and coffee or something like that on it. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't condone that sort of activity. They have an awesome uh, – like after the poll, the entertainment's just top-notch. They have great food. Um, they <laughs> it's got, across uh, the street, right? <laughs> they, have, they have great food. They got uh, they got a great band that comes in, a couple bands anyways. And everybody dances, parties, you know, there's no stiffs hanging out in the sides. I mean, everybody kind of gets into it. And then, of course, like if that's not enough for you, you can just roll across the street and head over to the strip club if you want to. You know, it's really funny. The very first pass I ever made on my tractor um, was Macville, Wisconsin. Um, the fuel shutoff assembled from Enderley was wrong, and I lifted the blower at probably 27 feet. Um, but we didn't really get to hang out in Macville. We only had the mini rods one time there. So it was, it was a very neat pool. First time I ever met Jason Schultz was there. We were actually on a display with uh, Schultz at a Panera bread in uh, oh. Macville. But very first pass ever, Grand National pass ever made was at that pool, Macville, Wisconsin. I mean, the, sports never been the, same, the sports have never been the same since, Adam. Uh, yeah. Right. I, I can say that for a fact. Okay. Maybe we're maybe getting... uh, maybe I'm the reason we're not allowed back at Macville again either. You know, <laughs> we we all we all have our uh, our history. So, okay, Josh, it's been awesome. We're wrapping the things up. Ton of fan questions. We're gonna ask you a couple of questions from fans. Uh, we always say we're gonna do this, but we always run out of time. But these are pretty specific, and I think they are would be educational for everyone. From Ross Canuvin. Uh, Apologies in advance if I mispronounce your last name. Do you prefer the V8s or the six cylinders? Um, From a competition standpoint and a mechanical standpoint. So uh, the six cylinders, um, they're more reliable at the moment, and they're more fun to drive. Uh, They're easier to drive. Um, The V8, we kind of got to detune a little bit um, just to – save the block so I, I would say the six cylinders for sure my heart jeff hurt says v8s by the way uh 
Last question. Um, again, love you fans. Thanks for tuning in. Last question. We got two truths, one last segment from Mike Stefan. Josh, approximately are the horsepower of the light super. What's the difference in the horsepower of the light super and the heavy super V8? <clears throat> Um, or are you allowed to say that? Well, I'll just say this. Uh, the light supers, uh, we're pushing harder than we are the, the heavies. Um, HD, we're pushing the hardest, but uh, it's still, I mean, everything relatively looks pretty decent when we take things apart. Um, we're not doing, the, you're not, you're not going to see us do the maintenance and, and work like, you know, some of these guys with the diesel tractors that are going out there with everything they got. Um, you know, we're not, we're not tearing shit up. <laughs> I think Did you hear that? Was, was was that a nudge, right? Like a, a little no, like no, a it's fire just, stick in the side there, Tyler. Yeah, that's that's what I heard, Chase. Yeah, that we was almost got this whole show without diesel in that first alky, but you had to bring it up, Josh. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Your last statement on that. Yeah, no, it's definitely not not. It's nothing against those guys. It's just a different deal, different fuels. Uh, the, the motors have different characteristics. Uh, you know, they're pushing a lot of timing, and the cylinder pressures are just insane you know uh and hats off to those guys that are figuring it out and getting getting life out of those things it's it's really tough to do and any competitive you know well you, would you ever I, I can't quit asking questions would you ever build a diesel super stock competitively yeah i honestly um i i think they're fucking awesome and uh i would love to i'd love to drive one i'd, I'd love to be in the pro stock class i mean i love it all but uh the one thing I don't like about diesels is the fuel and air aspect of it. You can't control it. I mean, you're at the mercy of whoever's building the, that stuff. For you. So the guy that's working on your pump, whether it be like Hartz or, or Weimer, you know, um, you're relying on them. Like you're not controlling any of that stuff. The alcohol stuff, you can tune it yourself. You're controlling everything. You're controlling how much fuel is returned to the tank, all your nozzles, the mixtures, when, your stages are popping off. I mean, you're doing all that yourself. So, um, we're on a diesel. It's just more what they give you, and you're maxing it out, anyways. Unless you want to go out on your own and try to figure out how to how to build your your pump and you know plunger technology and and, and you know it's highly unlikely. Highly so, technical shit. All right. Yeah. So I have one more. Finally, whenever we finally take a sponsorship of the Snow Practice Podcast, we've been turning them all away, but one day we will take one on. And we're going to build a no practice podcast diesel super stock. Will you come out of retirement and drive it for us, Josh? Oh yeah, yeah. And will you and will you work on it and not make let us do anything? You do it all. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, that good. sounds good. We got a deal. Future sponsor, you heard it right there. No practice podcast diesel super. Josh Blackburn, pilot. Josh, if it wasn't for fabrication, CNC machining, or anything pulling related, what do you think you would be doing for a living? You have to have something in the back of your mind that when you were a 10 year old kid, you were like, if that doesn't work out, I'm going to be X. Tell us what X equals. <sighs> Shoot. I don't know. There's got to be. Something. I can't think of anything else I wanted to do. I mean, I, at, a, at a young age, I, I knew that I wanted to try to do this. Um, really? I'd, I'd probably uh, be in this promotion a promoter, maybe. Something, something social, um, sales maybe. Uh, who knows? Okay, fair enough. Well, that answer sucks. So tell us your best Bowling Green story. <laughs> oh shoot! I'll tell you one. Um, it was actually at Wellington, Ohio. I don't have too many Bowling Green stories I can actually talk about live. So yes, let's you can. Uh, yeah, you can. Let's just yes, shift you can. that over. That's the point of this. Well, this one's good. I, I think it'd be a good compromise. Um, okay. So this is probably um, maybe 23 years ago, uh, something like that. I, I don't really remember. Um, Jeff Hurt and myself, uh, we, had, we had just got done pulling, and um, we were drinking in the pits. It's Wellington, Ohio. Uh, Larry Roberts was a big sponsor. He had his two-engine mod there, or the stuff, um, two six-cylinders. Friday night spectacular in Wellington, Ohio. Uh, yeah. So um, – so they just come over to the hauler. Jeff and I are standing there, and, and uh, they're they're just kind of like asking us some questions. That we gave them some beer. Um, we're having a good time talking with them for a little bit. One of them wanted to go to a house party. We decided to go to it. Uh, we're at the house party for a while. Comes to the end of the night, 
uh, Jeff and I are walking back to the pits and those girls had their car there. Um, so they're with us and we see this public pool and one of them is like, we should go skinny dipping in that pool. And it's got all the ingredients. You have to. I'm like, yeah, uh, there's a fence around the perimeter. You know, how's this going to happen? It was a tall fence. Like it, um, Jeff's like, fuck, this is no problem. We go over to the fence. Jeff's trying to pull it out. I'm pulling it out. And our plan was to go underneath the fence, the chain link. And uh, there was a little, somebody didn't deburr something on the fence. And I caught my finger on it. It cut me and I let the fence go. And right when I let it go, it went right into Jeff's foot. And uh, <laughs> we, uh, we went back to the house party. Cause you know, nobody had phones. We go back to the house party, uh, get Jeff in a car, get him to the hospital. Later on the next day, the cops arrived at this house and, uh, they followed a blood trail all the way to the house. Uh oh, <laughs> knocked on the door in the morning, I guess, looking for somebody that got into that pool. And I don't know what happened. You'd have to ask Jeff, but nobody got in trouble. I don't know if Larry had to bail or somebody bail us out. Cause nobody got tickets for the deal and uh I'm fans got wrecked but that's all american amazing. sport greatest greatest yeah. sport in the world you just that's heard right there really out of character <laughs> for jeff Hurt. <laughs> it's hard to imagine that coming from him he's he's one of my favorite guys uh are you guys got, both about the same age right no he, he's older than me but you wouldn't is know he it. yeah you wouldn't know yeah. it <laughs> All right, Very we're at, we're just over the two hour mark, uh, Josh. I feel like we got to roll into our two truths and one lie segment, which uh, hopefully Chase so diligently prepped you for that, so you're coming prepared. Yeah, uh, I was working today, and Mom came out of the office, and she's like, "Hey, I heard you're going to be on this podcast tonight. You know they do that, you know, two truths, one lie. Are you ready for that?" And uh -huh. I'm like, "I'm not. Do you want to work on my?" And she's like, "All right, I'll." I'll I'll go in the office and I'll, I'll do some stuff. So I actually got some stuff she wrote down here. Um, so okay. your, mom, your mom's a fan too. Yeah. Yeah. She watches. Oh, She's watching right now. We, we have arrived. Terry Blackburn's <laughs> uh, wife, Josh Blackburn's mom, is a no practice podcast fan. Get her t shirt, Sazzle. We'll send her t shirt. Yeah. Free Josh Blackburn. <laughs> free Josh Blackburn. <laughs> All right. So <clears throat> I used to raise rabbits and sell the baby bunnies to a pet store. Oh, that's fucking good. I hope that's true. Okay. <laughs> you, I've tractor pulled shirtless before. Mm. Three, first time I pulled a tractor, I won my class. I want the third one to be the lie, so I'm going to go with the third one's a lie. Selfishly. Gentlemen, what do you think? Chase, Adam? I think, I'm, I'm going to say the rabbit part. The rabbit, I mean, that that's just... It has no, nothing no. to do with anything going on right now. So I'm how do you make up shit like that? I mean, who does who pulls a? Did you watch the early part of the show? The two, the rapid fire. You can make shit up like that with enough thought to it. <laughs> <laughs> There's some sadistic people out in the world these days. Um, I know. Got I don't know. You got a pretty good history of a success. So the, number three would be very easily think. But I'm going to say number three is a lie. Number three is a lie. Yes. Tell us about your <laughs> rabbit raising. Yes, we need to know about this. Tell us about I your mean, rabbits. Uh, this could be another hour. Yeah. I got into, uh, you know, working in the shop with dad and that and some carpentry tools, things. I would make these rabbit hutches when I was younger. I mean, I had to been. Fifth, sixth grade. I don't know what it was, but true, ma true, true machine. I started raising I rabbits, and I was I was selling them to the pet stores. A I wanted you here. to say, I don't know. I was 35, 36, <laughs> something like that. So since you're <laughs> since you're breeding breeding rabbits, how long does it take for a rabbit to reproduce? Oh shit! I don't even know. <laughs> you bullshit! I have no idea. I, have no idea. <laughs> this, I mean, I was young. I mean, this is the Tyler yeah, he, wants it to be like last year, but I'm, I'm yes, sorry. Yes. That's funny. Oh. Well, well, I think that's, a, that's a very. Than that. My yeah. mom's like, you better go with that one. You better say it.
that. So yes. I totally yeah. Thank you to your mother for that. That one. was, that was right. extremely well thought out. I would have said that was a lock. You won your first pull. Uh, so yeah, shout out to yeah, our, no shit. one of our biggest fans. She will be getting a free Josh Blackburn t-shirt in the mail. Uh, courtesy. Hey, of pull just pull. think Josh, if you're lucky, your last name could be spelled wrong. Just like Tyler's is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, is, I think is, this is, is a good point. Did it, does that say free Jason Bourne? It just looks like it to me. <laughs> like Bourne. <laughs> Fans, uh, just like always, this is always a sad moment, but we got to wrap our show up. Don't forget the Mac Winter Nationals. We have some side wagering going on amongst your three hosts here, uh, along with the $1,000 challenge. Sign up uh, on the Full Pool app, fullpool.us, $1,000 with odds. Me, Tyler and Adam are kind of long shots now, but if you uh, if you bet on Adam, I think you would probably win the event, and you would get to see me uh, take off in reverse uh, in a future outing. Once again, we love you guys. We love the sport. Uh, episode twelve has not failed. Josh, you were kind of a little stiff, a little uptight when we got going, but the the rapid fire always opens it up, and you've been an amazing yeah. guest. Um, next episode, March twenty seventh. We have some really, really, really exciting guests coming on uh, that we will be advertising. Just stay tuned. You won't miss it. In the meantime, tell your friends, tell your sisters, tell your brothers, tell your family. No practice podcasts. Tune in. We love you. Adam, what do you have to say? Next guest that's on the show, Chase may be slightly more enthused about him than he was Colin Ross, so that's a lot. Like. (laughs) We'll we'll see if they pull through. Uh, Josh, yeah, we'll see. Thanks for thanks for helping us break down rabbit breeding and haircuts. That's what we're here for. <laughs> Cheers, hey, fellas. Anytime. Cheers, man. Cheers. See you guys soon. Hey, and get your Mac Winter National tickets. Ticketmaster.com. Adam Kester, Wadesville, Indiana. That's a wrap. Bye bye. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the No Practice Podcast. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Stay tuned for the next episode where we guarantee there still won't be any practice. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.